Ooh, ooh, ooh. We up? <laughs> it's, hey, this man, oh, I think my shirt on backwards. This dude always. Oh, <laughs> for real, I do. I think it's supposed to be something on the other side, but y'all know I was rushing. Listen, man, we back. Hey, we back. We just started. Kayshawn Bouti, man, congratulations. Congratulations on getting that number seven, my dog. Y'all know I was cheering for the big dog, Jay Ward, to get it, one of my favorite LSU players. Um, but Bouti is a, is a, we already know what he could do. Fantastic, fantastic football player and even a greater young man. Uh, glad to see him uh, with that honor. Welcome, man. Where my dog's at? We got the big dog, Eddie Kane, Eddie Kennison. One of the great wide receivers uh, in LSU's history um, coming up with us uh, in a little bit. We're going to be back on Where My Dog's At. Who, who? Be back. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done! Do you suffer from chronic dehydration? Are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at GoFlow IV? They're located on Jefferson Highway. Easy to find them online at geauxflowiv.com. Make sure and use the promo code Jordy Colada Show. If you do, they'll take 15% off of your initial visit. Check them out online, geauxflowiv.com. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyron Lacey, Barry Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. The coach is the most important play in this whole thing with these guys. Because one is new offenses, then guys are younger, guys are coming from different systems, coming from different everywhere. So the one that, that's the other fact that's going to come into this. Whoever picks this shit up the fastest? Whoever picks this it's up the even where, playing field. Yeah, 100%. Even playing field, because you talk about Miles Brennan having experience. He's had, what, four different coordinators in four years? Yeah, but that helps him also. Uh, yeah, because that's <laughs> yeah. just different terminology at that point. I've seen it all. Yeah. Uh, bring back the Joe Brady one. That one worked. That, that one seemed to work. Yeah, you adapt, man. You adapt. You adapt to it. And and Nussmeyer, by him coming, his dad being a coach and coming from um, that pedigree and that background, this is also something that he should be comfortable with. I know he's young, but learning different terminology, um, concepts are basically the same. It's you know, different verbiage. Curl flat is curl flat. Goals is goals. You know what I mean? It's just different terminology. So that type of thing for them should get picked up pretty easily um, from Nuss, Meyer, from all those guys. All those guys are smart guys. Miles, all those guys. They should pick that up pretty, pretty swiftly. But Nuss, Meyer's advantage in this whole thing is, I mean, without a doubt, it's less. Without a doubt, it's confidence. 
you know, without a doubt, his ability. And he actually reads defenses pretty good right now for the stage that he is in in his young, young, young career. He picks up defenses and goes to the right part, right place with the ball pretty good. His problem is getting them feet in line all the time or going there because he's so athletic. You know what I mean? So sometimes he just relies strictly on that quick twitch and getting that ball out, but he has to get his feet lined up. And also with him, he has to work on that accuracy, accuracy as well. Coaches chimed in on that. Uh, Lane Kiffin chimed in too. Lane Kiffin was like, his <laughs> Lane Kiffin said his mouth was still wide open. It was seven o'clock and he's still looking at the tele <laughs> at the television. And the press conference was that damn one o'clock in the afternoon. You know what I mean? So I, all those coaches chimed in because they were surprised at what happened with Coach Saban saying that. Because if you think about Coach Saban, everything that he does is very calculated, and it's and it's and it's to move the needle in his direction in his favor. So I don't know if what his motive was, I would love for him to let us know what that was or to come out so we can find out. I don't know what his motive was, but his mo but it, whatever his motive was, it was definitely something that he planned in my opinion. Just from playing for him and, and knowing him as a as a per as, you know, friends. So so what I gotta tell you yeah, what happened. So so man it's a when they play that song, that fight song, man. You know, we only play that fight song in the fourth quarter in the start of the game. Well, well, it was a time where they were trying to rally us and we were getting our ass destroyed. Yeah, it was it was 13 that in the halftime. The band played the fight song in the second quarter. Show like did. At a time Show did. It, it man, they absolutely that did. goddamn song got in my bones, and I started having a goddamn all about this thing. <laughs> and I told Coach Saber was walking, and I told Coach Saber, Coach, I want to play. And he looked at me and said, Why don't you step behind the line? <laughs> We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyron Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet, let's get it done. topics dog How you feeling man? hot topics let's get into that right now what we talking about right now is you know myself i played for uh coach jimbo fisher and i also played for coach nick saban um at the hot twilight of my years at lsu uh transferring from coach jerry donardo and I, i've spoken about this a couple times we gotta turn the air up down in here dog. Oh, damn um I've seen Coach Saban, honestly, get into a couple, a few spats with coaches, with, with players. And the one person, honestly, and everybody knows Jimbo's my guy, but the one person that I've never seen back down is Jimbo Fisher, right? So for, so for, for Coach Saban. Baby, woo! Let's go. Woo -hoo! We back. Hey, like I told, listen, I told when y'all tune in to this show, man, you just never know who gonna show up, what's gonna happen. My dog Dwayne in here today. This is my dog, LSU. Why y'all let him go, I don't know, but he's back to holler at his dog in the kennel. He came in with the great eight of Kennison that y'all gonna see in a minute. My dog, my long time dog. Tamara Davis came in with him. You, it, oh, it's just a great day today. But like we said, 
Welcome, 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 welcome to Great Eddie. Eddie. I call him Eddie Kane, but I call Eddie Kennison. <laughs> what's up, Ed? What's up, baby? Yo, Ro, what's up, man? How everything been, bro? Oh, man. It's listen, it's always good. You know, I you I see you all the time around and you know, all that. So it's always good now to have you here. So I can ask you some questions. Come on, bro. Hit me with so it. I can ask you some questions. First of all, how you doing, bro? <laughs> how you hey, doing? Man. Hey, and listen. Eddie didn't want to drink, but for y'all to know, Eddie is a wine connoisseur. <laughs> you hear me? I, there's no bottle I could have brought in here for him. You know what I'm saying? There's no wine bottle. There's nothing I could have brought in here to impress him. He got it all. So I was hoping he brought me one to taste, but we're going to have him back. <laughs> and, you know, when he knows the etiquette, then, you know, we'll get, get it right. Hey, brother, the, the only etiquette is, you know, the wine that you buy, and if your taste buds like it, it don't matter if it's $2 or if it's $2,000. Well, my, my taste bud don't like $2 wine. I'm going to tell you that right now. It don't like $8 wine. It don't like $10 wine. It sometimes don't like $20 wine. Right. Well, so there's a difference a in wine now. There, there is a difference. That's the one thing I've learned since I growed up a little bit and I drank the wine. There's a huge, like you could get a cognac and it could be about $15 and then get one that's about $30. It could taste a slight difference. Not too big, right? But an $8 bottle of wine <laughs> and a $30 or a $40, there's a huge difference. There's, there's you know difference. that. There's some difference. No there's question. some difference. <laughs> hey. What you been up to, bro? What you been doing, man? We, 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 the teller, my, the people, that was one of the most questions that came across is, what is what is the great Eddie Kennison doing right now? Right, man. So, uh, you know, I'm working with LSU Sports Properties, uh, you know, before Sports Properties, uh, when O brought me in uh, as a director of player development for LSU football Correct. for the last two seasons. And uh, when he got fired and Brian came in, Brian, he dismantled pretty much the entire staff. Uh, so LSU Sports Properties uh, hired me on uh, to do a version of sales. So I'm a senior account executive uh, for LSU Sports Properties. And what is LSU Sports Properties? So if you, you look at all radio, television, advertisement, all of the signage uh, in Tiger Stadium, in Pete Mack, uh, gotcha. So basically bringing in corporate sponsorships to bring in dollars for LSU athletics and all of the signage that you see on television, on radio, on podcasts, uh, in the stadiums. We so not just them. football, the entire program. The entire athletic department. Yeah. Now, how is that different from what you was doing, Eddie? It's sales. <laughs> and, yeah, know. you know, now, now I have to convince a potential corporate partner or a current partner to uh, uh, continue doing business with LSU Athletics to help them uh, bring in money for LSU Athletics mm -hmm. and convince them that it's a great program to be a part of and that we bring some value as LSU Athletics to their business so their business can ultimately grow and they give us dollars to help with uh, the athletic program. Now, does that have anything, do, does that have anything to, to do with NIL? Like, so, are these partners, because we had um, um, uh, Clay Schechner on here last week, which was a speaker, and he was telling us one of the difference that they had to change was be, how within the state, the biggest problem with the NIL for LSU and the in-state schools were there was a, a, a bill that wouldn't allow outside entities and big outside corporations to give money to these kids in state. Mm -hmm. And they went in and changed that and now you can have these larger companies that aren't in the state of Louisiana can now come in and offer these guys, you know, like everyone else. Right, like a, like a, a true NIL or corporate sponsorship. But for us as LSU Athletics, I if it hadn't been signed already, we're waiting for the Louisiana legislation to sign uh, a petition or a uh, the deal for us as LSU Athletics or LSU Sports Property to help uh, facilitate NIL deals with our students. Will we be able to get all of them? Probably not. We can't offer, once they do sign it as LSU Sports Properties, we won't be able to uh, say, hey, corporate partner, we can get you 
the top player on on LSU football correct, team, correct. but we could potentially get you a player right. on LSU football team. So we'll be able to facilitate it with the corporate partner. We just can't guarantee the particular athlete that they may uh, may be looking for. The the interesting part about that is you will have some of the the people that you're going to, and some of the people that you're trying to procreate these funds from, they will come out and just ask. And they will definitely be, so I don't understand why it would take that long for you guys to get the, the, the go ahead to do that. Well, I mean, one, it's it's the athletes and all of this is still brand new. NIL right. is still so brand Absolutely. new. And there's so many uh, more I's to be dotted, so more many more T's to be crossed in this whole deal because as, a, as an athlete, uh, you know, if I can look back on my day, I look at a guy, I'll just take Joe Burrow for uh, Jamar Chase. You know, if those guys were in during NIL, I would not want anybody, not LSU Athletics, not uh, uh, not my coaching staff, not anybody to facilitate a deal for me. I would find somebody else outside of Correct. LSU Athletics to facilitate a million-dollar deal for me because I don't want LSU getting any of my yeah, money. Yeah, any part of it. That's right. That's my first thought yeah. process. Uh, but we will be able to, you know, help the, the the guys who potentially don't have the bigger names to help put a few dollars in their pocket, you know, down the road. Right, the guys that aren't the Jamar Chases and the Joe Burrows of Correct. the world, right? Or the Rohan or, Davy. Or, <laughs> or you, but let me say, how how is the NIL situation like? Say, if you can a group can a group get it? Like, say, can the starting five offensive linemen? Uh, can they facilitate a deal for say Subway or someone like that? And now you get the you get the money as a group as opposed to an individual. I'm gonna have to say yes. If if those five just say offensive linemen or defensive linemen, if those five guys facilitate a deal for themselves with a big corporate sponsor like a Subway or something, yeah. I don't see why they could not do it. I mean, they're, they're at this point in time that I know of. They can facilitate whatever they want to with whoever they want to. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna change it up a little bit because I, I I got a question for you, dog. What made you choose LSU? So, here's here's a, a short story. I had originally committed to Florida State. Okay. And this was a I went for my official visit to Florida State. Who recruited you at Florida State? Well, Bowden was the you know the the head guy. I don't yeah. remember the. The recruiter, the, the recruiter. Gotcha. Okay. don't remember the recruiter, but I committed, I got there Friday morning. I committed to Florida state Friday night. That was just, that was my environment. Yeah. Friday night. I committed. Yeah. That was my second visit. Texas ain't never my first Florida state was my second LSU wasn't even on the radar Saturday morning. I'm sitting in Bobbin's office and he walks into the office and he touches me on the shoulder and he says, Mike, I'm sure glad you're going to be a similar over with. And you know me, I'm a dude. I'm a, I'm a true dude. I, I just tell you, I don't hold. I don't think about it's. You said something. My truth is coming out right now. I looked up at Mike and said, "You know what?" Uh, I said, I, bowed and "I said my name is not Mike," and I said, "I'm no longer going to be a Seminole." And when I left out of his office, I called my head coach, Robert Laverne, at Washington Mary. I said, "Rob, call Curly Holman at LSU. Tell him I'm coming for a visit next weekend." I came to LSU that following weekend, and it was done. Curly Holman set it out for me. Damn. See? <laughs> Got no people named Star. <laughs> <laughs> That's that it. It was bitch. that simple. That simple. Damn. So he touched you on your shoulder and called you Mike. Called me Mike. And it was over. Over. Then you called Curly Holman. Curly, hey. Cur Curly Hump, you 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 damn right. Curly Hummer was gonna set it off, especially when you weren't even on the radar. You called talking about let me let me uh I'm coming on a visit. Dog, I it was it was it was Sunday on my way back from Florida State when uh, I called my head coach Rob Laverne and Curly called me Monday. Curly was in Lake Charles on Tuesday. <laughs> Him and Larry Edmondson was my receivers coach. He was the receiver coach at the time. They were in late Charles Tuesday. Yeah. Curly got in my little Mazda B2200 truck. <laughs> and you know, back then I had a couple of speakers in the back. Middle school was jamming. Curly get in my truck. He in my truck. 
turn it up. He turned the music up, dog. He was sitting on the side of him, just doing this right here. Curly. No rhythm, nothing. I said, I'm going to LSU. And when I went for my official visit that weekend, he set it out, and that's how I how, got to LSU. That's amazing. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Sat in your car with the music bumping and turned up mystical? Uh, <laughs> that mystical. That'll be. It was mystical. <laughs> Where I go. Yeah. Here I, Here I go. go. Yeah. Here I go. <laughs> Damn. So you took the visit. Yeah. Came and committed. And committed. When you when you came here, your when you reported and all that, and was it was anything different? As far as like, did they lie to you? Did you see anything? Did you get treated any different than when you came? No. It it was everything that I that I needed uh, for my young career, for myself and for my family. It was everything I needed. You wanted to stay close to home after. The Florida State shit. No question. Yeah. You know, mom could come see me play. Yeah. My family, all my boys back at the crib. We talking, you know, two hour drive from Lake Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my son's at McNeese now, so yeah, it's close. It's, yeah. I mean, shit, you blink, you there. That's it. You know what I mean? So I definitely <laughs> understand that. So your first, your first time running out. Let me ask you this. Had you come to a lot of LSU games? Because like me growing, I grew up in Miami. And grew up my, I didn't go to no Dolphins games. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to no Hurricanes games. I think I probably went to a couple. Huge fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Canes and Dolphins, anything in Miami. Mm -hmm. Huge fan. But I didn't go to a lot of the games. Mm -hmm. And I, the kids that I deal with now here, they ain't go to a lot of games. And I did not go to Baton Rouge. I, I did not go to one LSU football See game. See what I'm saying? I hear that shit all the time. Not one. And the reason I didn't come to LSU and go to the games and – LSU wasn't even on my radar to visit yeah. because of all of the, the racial things that I had heard about LSU being a part of. While like, you was getting recruited? No, no, just over time, while I was oh, in high school, yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. hearing the, the stories of uh, all of the, the, the racial things that were going on on LSU campus. It wasn't, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm not going there. Yeah. And uh, What year was that? Oh, I was, I graduated in 92, That's so 90, that, 91. Yeah. That, and so, because when I came here, dealing, talking to the old people, dealing with the elderly, talking to my son's grandfather, man, I, I didn't know half the stuff I knew about just like the whole Nicholson Drive and just going on out. And it wasn't even that long ago, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that, all that was going on. So I could see why that uh, detests you from wanting to come here to be a part of that it wasn't favorable that's for sure i mean it, it it wasn't i mean it was some things that had went on that lsu uh hadn't changed and there's still some things that they're working on that they need to change we've seen some things uh, uh changed in the last couple years like removing names from some buildings you know so some things are happening uh you know, I don't see a lot of it. I believe that it's slowed down a little bit. Yeah. But it needs to, that, that snowball needs to happen Con it again. It needs to continue. It needs to yeah, continue. Yeah, the, 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 the movement and the pace of it needs to be as it was two years ago when everything was just getting started and everybody was in an uproar. No question. About it needs to be the same, continuous. But I mean, that's up to us. We got to continue to talk about it, continue to keep that shit alive. That's right. And keep the That's momentum right. going on. And, and, and we have to hold, hold people accountable. That, that was what I was about you to know? say. All, the people who are in power, uh, hold them accountable. And I, and I truly believe that with, with President Tate, yeah. you know, getting yeah, yeah, that yeah, job, yeah. you know, obviously he has to come in. He has to get his feet wet to see the entire landscape. And we have to be able to support him and give him that 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 time that he needs to grab a hold of everything that has happened over however many years LSU has been in existence for him to grasp it and take a hold to it and we have to support him in those things to help move things forward yeah how you think he's done so far I think he's done a fantastic job so far yeah yeah I had an opportunity to meet him outside of the old athletic building spoke to him for about 10 minutes and mm -hmm. you know the one thing I get from him from speaking with him is it seems like he gets it. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like he gets where he is, the temperature of where he is and what needs to take place to propel LSU, you know, to where we want it to go. Um, but and now, let me get a better question for you. 
What you think is going to happen with this year's football season? <laughs> Bro, I sure wish I can tell you. Because since I left the building, I have not been to a practice. You haven't I, been over there? <clears throat> I mean, I've been to the building, but yeah. no one's been there. I went to, you know, I still have access to go work out, but haven't been to any practices, hadn't seen what they Have you met the new coach? I, I, I shook Brian's hand his very first time in the building, and I shook his hand again at our the, the annual company crawfish ball. That was it. And it was that was the extent, a handshake. So y'all don't know each other then? No. To, to put it that way, y'all, y'all don't know each other. How was, let me ask you this, how was that transition? How was that transition from going from Coach O, not knowing what the hell was going on with not having a coach for so long, <laughs> not knowing about the whole job thing? Like, listen, I know it's frustration, so I'm not asking, not knowing it wasn't no frustration about that time, because like I said, everybody that come in here is my dog, we in the kennel, so I, 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 I remember the time, and, and that all this was going on, not you personally, but just just imagine being where you don't know what's going on, ain't nobody talking, ain't nobody telling you shit, you know what I mean, it's all that, then transition, get a new coach, new coach come in, you don't know who's staying, who's <laughs> going, what the hell's going on, you know, just how did all that go, dog? Like, how did all that play out? What did they say? Did they, I, I, you know, I don't know, did they handle it to your satisfaction? Did they show you the, prof- the level of professionalism that it takes? You know what I mean? Like, because I, I, cause I ask these questions because I hear all the rumors and speculations, <laughs> and I've personally had my own run in with the, um, the trainers, not the trainers, that was that boy's name, the strength people. Mm-hmm. Had my own run in with them, hear about them kicking guys out the locker room and excuse me, out the weight room, guys that have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, you know, just it, it's been some disrespectful stuff I've been mm-hmm. hearing mm-hmm. and also I've been privy to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just wonder how did that go for you? If 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 you know me well enough, there's there's little things that bother me. Uh, I let people move the way they move, and uh, a lot of things don't bother me. That's just not the space that I'm in. I don't allow people to break my peace of who I am. It doesn't matter what they do. Right. It's how I respond to what they're doing. 100%. It, if, 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 I'm in, if I'm in a place of uh, uh, to make decisions, if I'm the AD, if I'm the, the head coach, or if I'm the assistant AD, I personally would have made different decisions, but I'm not in that position to make those decisions. Uh, I would have handled things in my own way and making decisions for certain things, coaching staff, other staff. I would have done things a little bit different. What they did, was it wrong? I can't say that it was wrong because it was their decision to make. It wasn't mine. Uh, And uh, there, there are a lot of other things like guys, you know, I've heard some guys not being allowed to go into the weight room. I've never had that. I can go into the weight room and work out. I know those guys. I've never had anyone in the weight room or that staff tell me that I had to leave the weight room. Every time I went in to work out, I've been welcome in there with no issues. Uh, I've never been in a weight room where another guy came in and they put him out. I haven't seen it. I've heard about it. And I can't say that it's true because I, I haven't yeah, witnessed see it. it. I haven't been a part of it. Correct, so, correct. And there, there has, there, I have not been, there's no guy, a former guy, that has called me or come to me and say, I was that guy that got put out of the locker room. So, right. you know, that's hearsay. Until I see it or until one of those guys who've been put out come to me personally and say, I was that guy. Right. It's just, it's rumors to me. Yeah. That's a true rumor, though. That one's true. I know that one's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know so, that one's true. So were, were you one of those guys that got put out of uh, the weight room? Well, I I wouldn't say, like, I got put out. But I would say that I wasn't welcome mm-hmm. being how I was approached at the entrance to enter the um, weight room. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. If you go to somebody's house and somebody don't want you at their house, how they open the door? They open the door and stick their head wrong. <laughs> like, right. who that is? Don't open the door at all. Yeah, 
right, right, right. Right? And then if they stick their head wrong and see you, right? If they want nah, if they want to let you in after they stick their head wrong, they're gonna open the door, right? They're gonna open that bitch and say, come on in, Rohan, come on in, Jay. <laughs> What if they do that and they don't open the door no more? What if they put their foot in the door now? What that tell you? Boy, you is not welcome at this bitch. That's what that's what I got. And that's how I feel about it. You know, now things are changing. They're trying to change some things, but that was my initial introduction mm-hmm. to LSU's new uh wait so, so 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 let me ask this with just Given the benefit of the doubt, not knowing because I wasn't there, mm-hmm. is it a couple of things? One, did they know who you are? Yeah, I talked to them the day before for about 30 minutes in each one of their office. Oh, they knew who you were. It was just the second day that you came in and it was, they put their foot in the door. Hey, dog, listen, and, and this is the thing. Since all that's happened, because that was way back when they first got here, right? Mm-hmm. And I ain't went over there since myself. Now I've gone over there because you know I deal with these kids and I'm never gonna cut them off or cut their blessings or nothing like that. And I recently gone back, I went to the seven on seven. I've I mean, I'm honestly I'm a fan of Coach Kelly right now. I'm a fan of anybody that's in that position, that's the leader in that position, and I'm a root for him. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I don't wanna see LSU be shitty. I don't never want to see that. I always want to see That's us right. on top. I don't care who in that position. You know what I mean? And then your first year in, coming from where you're coming from, coming to this environment, I'm going to give you a little grace, dog. Right. I'm going to give you a little grace. We have to. For one year. I'm going to give you a little grace for one year. That's all I give you. <laughs> you a little grace for one year. Because the thing is this. When you get that money, it's a whole different thing, man. You get that money, and you got all these M's, behind this contract and you come from a place that you've been at for 12 years and you come down here the only and I welcome him. I'm glad he's here I'm glad we didn't get that boy from Oklahoma State because he ain't want no smoke Lincoln Riley ain't want no part of the damn SEC you understand me that's why he went out there to USC right took that 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 took his offense out there to go to that cupcake defensive league and go out there and play and do what he want to do over there he ain't want none of that smoke in this SEC baby right and I, don't, and I don't blame them, honestly. I don't blame them. Get on the jet, go over there, make it 12, 13, whatever you make it, and hopefully win that conference. And, you know what I mean? Do your thing. I ain't mad at Lincoln Wright. He took the easy way out, and that's good for him. I ain't mad at him at all. I take the old man that want to smoke right now. Right. But the old man that want to smoke, you only get like a one-year grace to come down here with that. You only get one year. You got to figure it out. I don't care what, honestly, I don't care what the record is this year. Because I'm giving you grace this year. Uh, you got a quarterback situation that's up in the air. You got a young offensive lineman and trying to get that shit together. Mm-hmm. You're trying to miss mess and peace through the portal and all this. Uh, hey, I'm going to give you grace for one year, but that's all you get. Because you, you know why? I ain't the giving stand- grace. You ain't giving them nothing? I ain't giving no grace. That's even better. Don't give them none. You, you, Cause you the standards here, is you, high, though. You coming here, you ask. The standards you, high. You, you say you say you have a Shit, winning track Rick. record, and nah. the records show that he has a winning track record. You ask me, as a as a former See, player, you ask me as a tax paying no, citizen. Sure you, you ask don't, me don't to pay here, and and bring money into LSU, and we give you a hundred million dollars. Your grace period is training camp. He got a hundred million. What? 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 Why the hell did, did I? Did, did, what? Did this just escape me? How much money we gave him? Wait, bro, you didn't know that. What? Let me see. He made more than saving. It was it. Is it like no, ten years? No, you million? know, you know, saving got that clause. How much? Ten years, ninety-five million. Yeah, you know, Saban got that clause in his contract. Though, you got to be the highest paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if I've been if it was a that. Dollar, smart, you know? smart, smart guy. Mm-hmm. It's ten and a half million a year with five hundred thousand for like bonuses and stuff, and five hundred thousand for just making a bowl game. Oh, he ain't gonna make and no which, bonuses. Which is lovely. <laughs> which is lovely. He ain't gonna make no bonuses this year. Don't worry about that. Yeah, well, which gonna, is lovely. He ain't gonna make no bonuses. I'm glad what? he got paid. Who? <laughs> Brian. Hey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad for any man or Woo! woman. To get a paycheck I, that whew. that's that amount, I'm happy for him. There's no great your grace period. Well, I ain't know camp. that. <laughs> I didn't know he got a hundred. Damn, Eddie. Hello. 
Is it me you're <laughs> looking for? Right. Hey, I'm going to tell you this right now. No grace. I'm with Eddie. No, no <laughs> grace. No I grace. ain't know he got 100 million. No grace at all. None. No grace. Oh, I ain't know he got that much money. <laughs> no, he don't get no grace, man. Um, let me tell you something. And, and, you know, this is the thing, man. This is the thing. You know, we all debate this. Everybody debate this. Like, why did Brian Kelly leave a place he'd been for 12 years to come to LSU? Because LSU is, is, is the, the top of the food chain. That's why. Notre Dame can't hold candles to LSU and to SEC football. Yeah. Can't hold candles. So, let me ask you this. Because... When I see him come down here after all that time, ain't with no championship up there in 12 years, came down. So, and the times he's lost, he's lost the guys out of the SEC, right? Through recruiting, whatever, whatever. So, you come down, let me ask you this, Eddie. Do you keep the same recruiting philosophy you had at Notre Dame? Or do you now change because of where you at in the bottom, in the south, in the SEC. I just want to hear somebody say, no, he cannot recruit the same. So, so yes, you can recruit the same. Tell me why. The, the philosophy of recruiting doesn't change. You put the right people in place with a philosophy for recruiting and go and get the guy. You put guys that's been in the South, you put coaches and coaching staff that have been in the South to recruit kids in the South. You can have, as the head coach, You've been winning with the philosophy of recruiting. Now you bring your philosophy with the guys that are from the South with your recruiting philosophy and let them go to work in the South. You know the key point you just said? Let them go to work. Let them go to work. Don't intrude. Let them go to work. And I don't think you can recruit the same, dog. I don't think you can recruit the same athletes you recruited at Notre Dame. No, no, no. We, you ain't say the same athletes. Yeah, I'm you talking said about the philosophy of recruiting. Yeah, but you got to change that philosophy because now you down here. No, no, no. no. So you, you totally missed what I said. No, I you, see what you said. No, I <laughs> totally, totally get what you it. said. It's the philosophy is what you're saying. The philosophy can travel. Like they say, good defenses could travel and all right. that shit. Mm -hmm. The philosophy could travel, but you can't recruit the same. You can't recruit the same talent that you thought will get you the championship at Notre Dame. That's that, why you that, ain't that, win that's none. Why, that, that's why I say you get the guys, the coaches that have been recruited. And that's why I say out. you got to let them recruit. Yes, you got to let can't, them work. Like your philosophy is recruiting good guys. Your philosophy is recruiting guys that pass SATs and all that type of thing. And nothing's wrong with that. Absolutely 100% nothing's wrong with that. But what I'm saying is this. Whatever your philosophy was that was at Notre Dame, that didn't bring you a championship in 12 years, you can't come with all it. But the talent is different. Up that's there. my whole point. Right. So that's you, my whole, you can't recruit the same. That's my whole point. You can't bring that philosophy and say, I'm going to recruit the guys because your schools, you got a different school. Mm -hmm. The standards mm -hmm. are different. The, what, the interest bullshit, all that's different. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying is you can't hold those standards you had there, whether it's a 4.0 here and it's a 3.5 here, don't bring the, don't bring the 4.0 here. Don't bring it here. Keep it 3-5. <laughs> Give me a 3-5. Oh, three keep five. it for 3-5 for certain guys. <laughs> is what I'm saying. And, and that's all I'm saying. Like you had the it's there's a there's a there's a reason, dog. Like there's a reason. It, it it has to be. And so you gotta dive into why certain things have not happened. I'm I'm gonna tell you one more, one more tell you what the difference is. What it is. The the whole difference. What it is. I mean, we're all human beings, we all bleed red. You know, we we all gonna die ultimately. I'm gonna tell you, it's 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 how we it's how we eat down here, man. It's how we bred down here. You know, in 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 Notre Dame. Well, I don't even what I don't even know the town is in. You ever played there? South Bend, no. Indiana. You ever played there? South Bend, South Bend Indiana. I mean, you they, ever played there? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what they eat there, but we different down here. We oh shit. There. It, it's farms. It's you know we. I was raised, you know, slicing hogs in my grandfather's backyard. I was raised that if something is crawling across the floor, is it do I have to kill it or do I kill it to eat it? There's a difference, a, a mentality of who we are down here. It's how we raise. If you go to my mama house down here in 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 Baton Rouge or Louisiana, 
and you go to my mom was raised in Fort Bend, Indiana. It's a totally two different mamas. That's my point. Two different mamas. We're raised totally different. Our mentality is different. There, everything about who we are, our makeup down here in the South is totally different than up north. A hundred percent. And that's like when I left from here and got drafted and went up to New England. Shit was different. <laughs> different man. You know what I mean? That's why it was different. And so, I mean. I think that Coach Kelly knows it's different. I think he showed, and, 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 and from the very onset when he first got down here, first got in the PMAC, they first, I was in the building, first introduction, I think he felt it was different. I think he knew it was different. But let me tell you mm -hmm. something, Coach. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, ain't know, you don't know if it's different yet, dog. You don't know <laughs> it's different yet. Football, you ain't went through a football season yet. You ain't seen that stadium yet. You ain't lost a game you're supposed to lose yet. That shit ain't like, that's when it get different. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, Eddie, is because I played a game in Notre Dame. I think it was our freshman year, my second year. And, dog, they were the nicest people in the world. They beat out behind, too. Mm -hmm. They were the nicest people in the world. Thank you guys so much for coming. You know, it was wonderful for y'all to make the flight. Now, it was insulting to me, of course. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to have a couple of choice words. We just got <laughs> our behind. Trap, We're from the take South. Everything. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but when you say it's different, it really is. <laughs> like that stadium, it was so quiet. It was like, you know what I mean? So I could. So what I'm saying, this guy, you coming from? That's why I say I, I, I don't give him no grace no more. You pointed out all that, and he make a hundred million. <laughs> I gave him the grace because he was coming from all that. You know, those guys are. They were the standard in that conference. They made all the rules. Everybody catered to them. They had the nine home, the nine home games, and all that. So coming from that to this, I understand some of the obstacles, mm -hmm. but it's still LSU dog, and that's. The point I always try to make about like when we be happy, we came close to beating Alabama before or when it was a good game in the first half and motherfuckers being in, up in arms about, oh, we'll get them next time. And we were so close. And, you know, the moral <laughs> victories, dog, like there's no more like it, it, it's no more victories. That's no. not how this works. Especially when you're an athlete, you understand that <sighs> it, it's you either win or you lose. And it sucks when you lose. <laughs> and and, and, and it's, it's even crazy because when, when we lose as an athlete, especially here, we, oh, you know, we, we go back and we try to figure out what we did wrong so we don't have that feeling anymore. Mm -hmm. And more important than us, we got homeboys that's in Lake Charles, that's in Miami, that's in... Appaloosas, that you know, that will call you oh, hell yeah. after the game yeah, yeah. and give you the whole breakdown of the entire game and curse you out and tell you what you, what did, you wrong, did wrong so you don't go back and yeah. do it again next That was week. my little brother. <laughs> yeah. Everybody they got something to tell you. Hey, Eddie, when you knew when did you know that I'm going to the league? When I thought about it, it's probably it was probably my sophomore year here at LSU. When what when did it become a dream of yours to get to the league? Probably my sophomore year. For real? Yeah. That late. That late. Wow. Because it because it was it was all fun to me. Growing yeah. up in Lake Charles, playing in the street, you know, playing, you know, you know, high school ball. It was just all fun. That's what I knew. My parents didn't talk to me about money and balancing a check and make it to the National Football League. We didn't have those conversations. Yeah. It was just straight fun for me. Yeah. And then probably about my sophomore year. Uh, here at LSU is when everything just started to click and I started to hear like how much money I could potentially make and change the scope of uh, my family, family especially yeah. my mother uh, and then once that all came in then it was just like all right now we really got to buckle down and uh, and go get it so when you came out in your first year in the league KC St. Louis <laughs> St. Louis so your first year in the league let me ask you this, because I know, like, for me, it was just like, I, it, for me, my first year in the league, I found out that, like, I didn't work nearly as hard as I thought I was working. Mm -hmm. That was that was the, the, the biggest thing. I thought that all the time I was, and then I also figured out, and I figured out, but I saw that I was putting in wasted time. Mm -hmm. Like, time that I was just occupying time with, I wasn't getting nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, when you hit it, what was the biggest thing for you? 
learning the game, like business wise. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I know how to play football. Yeah. I knew how to play football. I knew how to have fun playing football. I've been playing in my entire life without making any money. It was learning the business of it. Oh, you gave me this much money. Now I know that the business, the back office of it, what is it? What does it look like? I know that, you know, my boys, my people say, oh man, now you, now you, you rich. Right. Well, okay, that's fine. How do I get wealthy? How do the owners buy this team? How did they get to the point where they bought this team? What did they have to do? That's that what you, that's you, you, that's what you was thinking about that, your that freshman, my, your rookie year? My rookie season. Boy, you're a gangster. You was a gangster. That's what you was thinking about. That, yeah. Because I already knew how to play the game. I'm going to tell you. It wasn't too many rookies thinking about how I'm going to get that money like that owner, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bro, when I tell you. They was thinking about how they were going to spend that money, what they were going to buy, how they were going to do this, how they going to do I didn't say I didn't spend it. That's how they. <laughs> oh, I know you spent it, baby. I saw you on campus with that big Benz now. I saw you on, I, hey, I, I saw you on campus with that big Benz, baby, <laughs> come, coming down the hill. You understand me? <laughs> I know you spent right. it. Oh. Hell, we got to get something. Got to get something. Got to get a little toy. Hey, no, I remember the first time I saw you, dude. You was and it was that time. You was coming down. I was with Big Zoo. Big Gabe Northern. Gabe Northern. My dog. Yeah. Right? Big Zoo. And we was over there chilling right across, right across, uh, from, uh, right in front of the Tiger Cage. Mm -hmm. Where it was that? Right across from the locker room, me and Zoo. Zoo had just came in time. We was just chilling. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what Zeus said, too. You're going to laugh. He was coming down the hill, and he knew. He was like, you know you know, Big Zoo how he talked. He was like, look at this old bitch ass nigga, Eddie Kennison. <laughs> That's him, too. Look at old Eddie Kane <laughs> with that big Benz. <laughs> I ain't even going to stop him. I say, who that is? He said, Eddie Kennison. You know that fast ass receiver. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, so that was like, and you like wind the window down and y'all like, you know, did your little thing, said what's up to you. Still that my dude it. to this day. Yeah, that was the first time I had actually seen you. And then, you know, after that, got introduced and everything like that. But, dog, what's the fastest you ever ran, dog? What's the fastest you ever got time, dog? My fastest 40 was 428. And where was that at? You ran that? I ran a 428 in my pro day. At LSU? Yeah. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Ran a 428 and uh you ran you, how many forties you ran that day twice? I ran twice. Do, what you ran first? Four three. Four three oh. Oh, you fast, fast. Yeah. And then I went on. Oh no, when you I was fast. You goodness, yeah. you rugs fast. <laughs> Well, yeah, I knew that. You knew Eddie Kane went four two eight. And then, and then that you supposed to hold my bad. Let me <laughs> cut you off. Op, you supposed to know that. What you mean? You the statistician. You supposed to know that boy went four two eight. Four two eight. That's serious. My That's God. Serious. That is crucial. For, and a lot of people don't know. You know, I did run track at LSU. I was six time All American. And track here at LSU. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. You said and, six. And I went on to win listen, the, man, the, listen. the NFL's Hold fastest man in my rookie season. Six. No, I, I remember that. How well, indoor and outdoor? Gracious. Yeah, indoor and outdoor. Yeah. A four two eight. Yeah. I didn't know that, dog. I got to drink one of that. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious! Hey, that is fucking fast. I didn't know that, though. I thought you was like, you know, four, three, five, somewhere around mm -hmm. there. You ran a four, three flat on your first one, and then you were just getting warm. <laughs> you were just getting warm. Getting warm and on the second one, you went four, <laughs> two, eight. Because I was about to say, if you ran a four, two, eight, you might have just stopped. Man. I ain't running no more. Yeah. No. My, my agent was there, and uh, he asked me to run it again. Because I was actually going to stop, and then he said, no. Was that the only again. thing you did that day? Did you do the workouts and the drills and stuff? No. I'm, I know you didn't. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. No, the only other person, the, like, I, the only person I've seen run, run that fast was Dante, um, what's that boy named? The DB out of uh, Virginia Tech. What's his name, dog? The DB out of Virginia Tech. Play, you know who he played in Atlanta? What the boy named? Dante, Dante Hall. Hall. 
I seen him run, cause we had the same agent, and I was I, I seen him go like that, but I ain't not, and he ain't go no four two. <laughs> only he, thing, only thing that was funny about his shit was he forgot about it. They called him, and he came over like straight out the bed, right? And they warm up or do nothing. Came over there with some bunny slippers or some shit on. And lined up and ran, and ran like a four three and get up out of there. Ain't gotta, stretch with nothing. Got to get it in, man. Duh. That's why I say, hey, what about when you was coming? They was telling you about because I know they told me like you know you go to Indy, don't run. You go to Indy now because the track is slow, so on and so forth. I wasn't gonna run anyway because I was slow, so I wasn't gonna run anyway. Right. But if you fast, you're just fast, dog. That's it. Ain't that's it? That's it. Cause you ain't scared to you weren't scared to run nowhere, and, bro. And, and I also ran track too, so that helped out a lot. Bro, I, ran track I did in high not school. know. Yeah, I did yeah. not know, boy. I did not know you went four two, dog. My God, man! It, I, I'm telling you, what I know now and what these kids are doing now. Yeah. If I was a football coach, if I was a head coach at LSU, yeah. Every one of my receivers and DBs run track. would run track. And you let me tell you what's so crazy about that is. All the youth start out in track. Right. I, all the youth and the ones that come from track are better for it. I wish I had to put my son in track a little bit more when he was growing up. Right. You're right. Yeah. All the old school coaches too. Yeah. Even way back in Miami, Coach Coach Hyman, my old track coach, all of us. I ran track. It's not like game, not man. like not like you know, not like <laughs> you ran track. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say that like I was in your caliber. Right, you know, I did the the long jump. I said I was on a track team. <laughs> I was on a track team. Right. You, you was contributing. No, I just went out there to try to get some damn points. Right. I damn near tore my goddamn leg up, man. <laughs> trying to do the long jump, trying to you know pop up off the thing. But but you know you but you did it though. Nah, I I really I really you did it. I kind of did it because when I did it, I hurt my leg. And it was the first time I did it, and I kind of hurt my leg. And I was like, shit, I play football and basketball. Damn, this track, I'm going to have to get y'all on points. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So I, I tore out. That was my love, that. man. Again, that was another sport that I enjoyed. I was just having fun. Track. And yeah. I was just having yeah, fun. Yeah, but I mean, Eddie, listen, it's easy to have fun in track when you run a fucking 4-2. Yeah, I guess Like, so. I had yeah. some fun, too, laughing at everybody I'm running by. <laughs> everybody, dog. Like, it just had to be fun sometimes. Just <laughs> go ahead and get that little, that little baton before me. I'm oh, going to come get it. We had you ever had to go get anybody? Oh, plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of times. I ain't going to lie, dog. That's one thing sometimes I wish. I wish I had, uh, like, I, I, like, one of my partners, Vic, Vic Farns. Shout out to Vic Farns, man, my boy. He got a little niece, and he always showing these clips of her on Facebook. And she fast as hell. And they showed a clip of her, man. And this is like, I wish I could, I wish I had an opportunity to have felt how this feels. Mm -hmm. Cause I've never ran nobody down <laughs> or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I've gotten ran the fuck down, but I ain't never ran nobody down. Right. Thought this little girl got the baton. It was, I think it was the four by four. And the, the, the other girl got it like two hours before she got it. You know what I mean? She damn near halfway around the track. Right. Boy, this little girl get that thing, dog, and run her down, passes her up by about 20 yards and wins. And the little girl going right. slow. This little girl is just exceptional. Oh, when you're you fast, understand you're me? fast, dog. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. You probably don't even feel the win when you was running that dog on 4 2, huh? <laughs> it was indoor. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, bro, just enjoying it, man. I enjoyed the journey. I had fun. Hey, what was your fondest moment in, in uh, St. Louis with the Rams? Well, uh, I probably have to say a couple of things happened my rookie season. Uh, I won the NFL's fastest man. Then I won the AFC Rookie of the Year. That's dope. And I won uh, the Rams uh, Team Rookie of the Year. Who was that voted on by the the, the, the the team? Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And, you know, just being able to have that experience, uh, being able to learn and, and be a part of uh, Isaac Bruce, yeah. who's in the Hall of Fame. So I played mm -hmm. with Isaac. 
Tony Banks was my quarterback who came in from Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, you know, bro, I mean, we just had – we had a close-knit team even though we weren't good. Yeah. But we had a close-knit team. And uh, I still am friends with a lot of those guys to this day. And uh, just being able to enjoy the experience of a game that I love so much. And now they were, they were paying me for it, so I was having even more fun. Trying to tell you, anytime you're getting that big check now, it's 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 makes things a little bit easier. Like you say, you yeah. you gotta you had to find out the business side of it. That was that was um that was hard to uh not hard, but that was something that I had to get adjusted to too. Just right. understanding that this is not just a damn game. You right, know, it's a business. It's check. a business. And when you when you get the you get to the point where you say I can change the dynamics of my family. Now, a lot of people just stop with, oh, my wife or my kids. Mm -hmm. But I, now I'm even deeper. I'm even, you know, my kids Everybody, are good. Everybody, yeah. I'm, now I'm talking about my kids. 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 And their kids. Building generational wealth. I didn't say riches. Wealth. When you got to think about, you say, somebody say, man, I make a million dollars a year. That's, that's a lot of good money. Well, you got to pay your taxes, and then that cut it down a little bit more. But when you create, a lot more, Eddie. A lot more. But yeah, when you but when you create something and you write a check to pay for people, right? That's a different landscape. That's right. Like and you say, you the put owner. Yourself, yeah, you put yourself in that position and put your kids mm -hmm. and their kids and their kids in that same position. It just keeps growing, man. You change the dynamic of everything. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, listen. That's why these laws that hold certain people back have to change. That's why certain people got to come together to make sure that you can have that opportunity mm -hmm. to build that generational wealth you're talking about for mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the biggest things coming here to Louisiana in the next couple of years is legalization of marijuana mm -hmm. and for recreational purposes. And listen, we got to make sure that we get ahead of this thing, man. And, and, and the people that are regular citizens, the people that are regular people could have an opportunity to get in on this. Mm -hmm. You see how it's taking off and everywhere else they've, they've, they've pushed, this, pushed it out. Denver, Arizona, everywhere, Oklahoma uh, City, everywhere. That's legal, and it's changed the economy. It's changed the the whole landscape of that state. Well, it's coming. It's coming. It's definitely coming. And I can tell you that, and you probably know as well as I do. Oh, I mean, I they grow it at LSU and at Southern. Southern. They, and it's coming to the point, and I think they it, it hasn't fully come full circle yet because I think they're figuring out how to continue to grow it without it dying in our soil. So well, the evolution of it. I mean, you can bring it in, but to grow it, well, it has to be able to navigate well, and gravitate to our soil. They got to go ahead and go get these people that know how to grow that, that thing. Oh, they know how to grow it. It's the ground. It's the soil that it's in. Hydroponics. Hydroponics. They don't have to, hydroponics. They, listen, they, they got to go get them people that know what they're doing. <laughs> don't nobody in Louisiana, them people don't know how to grow no, no marijuana. <laughs> you got to go to Denver. You got to go to California. You got to go to these no. places that, well... New York, you gotta go to these papers that, cause that's what we was talking to with Clay on here, and, and you know who who did you guys bring in to help you guys with this process? Because bro, uh, it's not something that you want to wait. You can't wait. You gotta get these seeds pop. Like he has, they have to go and get the right people to come in to grow mm -hmm. and grow. They have already done it. But most importantly, they got to change the business, change something else. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to lock it down and make it a conglomerate and privatize it and make it for big industry and big pharmacy. And that's no good for the people. Mm -hmm. That's no good for the regular people that don't have an opportunity to say even if and, and then even if you outprice it to where these 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 um permits and stuff is unattainable. But you have to. It has to be a way to give these regular people an opportunity to get in on it bro because it like you pointed out it it changes the whole landscape of people's lives right you know 
Well, it, 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 the first thing I would say, you know, in, in that regard, if, you, if you're talking about just regular people mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter who it is, one, you have to get people that are informed about it, who are serious about the business aspect of it. Absolutely. Not just doing it because for money. it's there and it's legal. Absolutely. No, you want to do it for money. Absolutely. Now, you know, a lot of people get, you know, they have these conversations, oh, it's not about the money. Yes, it is. There's God, there's breath, and there's money. You need all three of those. Amen. And And when you start yeah, talking about, oh, it's not that. about the money, then, you know, it is about money. Because if it wasn't about money, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So you get the right business-minded people to say, let's put something or group together where we can raise or my group put together and raise, I don't know, 20, 30 million dollars as a, as a group, whether it's five guys or 500 guys and girls, and say, this is our business. We wanna put our 30 or 40 million dollars into the pot to be able to create this business for when this industry gets legalized, then we can be players in the game. And you can figure out what you do from there after everything gets legalized and your business start making money. Now you can expand and start doing other things as individuals because you've made enough money. But first you gotta stand in there and you can't have all of the issues and problems, you know, because, you know, Five dollars get put in the pot, and you got ten people. Well, how are you gonna split five dollars? Leave the five dollars in there, reinvest it until you can make enough to split and start doing your own thing. And yeah. that's where a lot of people get misconstrued and they get I'm upset. Tell you, like they got to make it to where we can even get to that spot. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, because this is the thing: if it's just because right now you you got medical. People that's in on medical are going to have the slide and the gateway into recreation. And then now, if your medical facility has over 3,500 clients, mm -hmm. you're now crossed over into the commercial side of it when it pops. And now you, once you have another 35, you can open up another dispenser, another. So this is the thing. Once you in on the medical side of mm -hmm. it, everything else, you slide in on the commercial, but it's already a conglomerate because the medical side is the side that's holding it down mm -hmm. right now because there's no commercial. So if you're in on the medical side right now, it's most likely that you're going to also be in on the commercial side. And there's only certain individuals or certain people that have gotten that... Um, um, Right to do that. Right. You know, permit right, to right. do that. And they're ahead of it. And so for me, man, it's got to make it available, make it to how. And I'm like, you got to be responsible. You got to be educated and all that. But don't don't just make this a conglomerate and shut certain people out. Mm -hmm. Because what that does is the wealthy people continue to get wealthy. And the people that don't have any money or the poor, they now the division even grows even more mm -hmm. with that much money being out there but it's only going to a certain sector and i'm not saying white or black or whatever but i am saying rich mm -hmm. i am saying privilege i am saying whoever is in position to line it up to put whoever is in position to now benefit from it so it has to be a way to make it so regular degular citizens to have an opportunity to benefit from it as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So however they gotta go about doing that, whether we gotta get these signatures and get them talking and get some buzz going, we gotta do something, baby, we gotta do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Eddie, we gotta do something. Well, all we know is fight, man, all we know is fight. Hey, I've been to Kansas City, I've played out there, uh, I, I've uh, experienced uh, that temperature out there which is similar to Boston when I was out there, but I love that stadium. Mm. Arrowhead is uh I love that stadium, dog. It's the second coming of uh of Tiger Stadium. I love that stadium, <laughs> dog. Yeah. I love the fans and I you know they're not my fans, but just if I if I was a chief, 
I would love that stadium and those fans. It, it, they're, they're just like our our fans here at LSU. They're talking they that tailgate shit. the same. They 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 they're just as ruthless in the stadium. <laughs> they're just as loud, and they love their football team. And it doesn't get any better than that. So I had the the opportunity, obviously, to play for both yeah. LSU and for Kansas City, and for a national football league team. They are the second coming to Tiger Stadium. Wow. It, it doesn't get any close. And I've played in every single stadium in the National Football League. I played in, I don't know, probably half or over half of the stadiums in college football. There's nothing that comes close to Tiger Stadium and Arrowhead Stadium. What about compared to like when you played with the Saints in the Superdome? Yeah, it, does, it does, doesn't even compare. Play, playing, playing in New Orleans, the time I played, now is different. The time I played in New Orleans, you know, it's it's like going to you know my old high school, Washington Man High School, in Lake Charles, and yeah. listen to that. That's how it was. You went in, to the same high school with a big whiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now cool. if you go to New Orleans now. I mean, it's a it's a totally different atmosphere. Yeah. I'd love to play for the Saints now. Huh? Now, yeah. absolutely. You ain't man. lying, boy. But, Every time yeah. I go in there, that thing they about to oh, blow the that, that I went to a, I went to a couple Woo! games the last so couple. So what was years. it like like when you played there? It was like really like no fans though. We had some fans. If if uh if the dome <laughs> at the time, I don't know what they hold with seventy two thousand, seventy eight thousand, something like, something that, like yeah. that. We probably had about thirty thousand oh, people in this thing. Oh that's that's COVID no. <laughs> oh, Lord. We didn't even get that COVID. Over that right. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know Lord. and you know, we we the Saints we were just not a good football yeah. team uh, uh back then and um it, that was on just the Ricky went, Williams team though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Mike Dicker gave away all of the draft picks Dude. to get Ricky Williams. <laughs> get and I Ricky. was a free agent coming in from St. Louis that year to play on that team. And, um, How yeah, was we, that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, bro, come on, all, come all, on. All I'm going to say, all I'm gonna say <laughs> is that it, it, it was a rough season. <laughs> It was rough. Well, Mike Dicker came out with the dreads. Oh, like <laughs> dude, it was, it, bro, it hey. was a, you, I, I, I love Mike Dicker as a person, as a coach. Yeah, I, I love Mike Dicker. Mike <laughs> Dicker, I go in the foxhole with any day of the week. <laughs> Just we weren't a good football team. Dude, y'all we traded every single pick though. They traded every pick for every Ricky. single every pick, pick to get Ricky. Every pick. Oh. Texas. <laughs> Man. Every pick, bro. It was a, it was it was like the craziest shit. For real. Like every single pick. And then what when y'all had y'all first, like say team meeting, and how did that go? I don't even remember. I New Orleans, that year in New Orleans is a is a blur. Is a blur to me. Let me tell you, I always, when I was in the NFL, I wanted to go back to Miami to play just like because it was home, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But then I thought about it again. I was like, no, nah, I want to do that just because it's, it, it's just, it's, I feel like it'd be a lot of distraction because Miami played there, family, friends, and all that thing. Was it a distraction here when you signed with the Saints? The only distraction for me uh, is this is where I'm from. So, That's what so I'm saying. ticket requests. And yeah. everybody being at the house every day of the week, that was a distraction. <laughs> so you lived, but you was in New Orleans. I lived in New Orleans. It didn't matter. I, I, got, <laughs> I, got, I got homeboys that's 21, 22 years old that just. Hey, we coming. We coming. We on the way from my attention, right? Dustin? Oh, man. I, I'm talking about. We coming to get that life, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> there was not a time where my, there was not somebody in my house. What, what was the, what was the priciest thing you bought, Eddie? For you, not for your mama, not her house, not her car. What was the priciest thing you bought for yourself? My house in Houston, at the time. Got you. Yeah. Got yeah, you. yeah. Houston property value, you could hold that though. Yeah, we we did pretty good. Even when I sold it, we did pretty good. Yeah, you could yeah. hold that Houston yeah, yeah. property value, especially if it's a crib like that. See, it ain't it. that. So, went through all that, and I think that people are very much know about your story that you went through your trying times and like we all do hell you know mm -hmm. like we all do when that like for me it was when football was slowing down and there was no interest from clubs 
There was no interest from, you know, anybody. You feel like, well, well, I felt I got to see what's next. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that mm -hmm. was like my depressing times, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out, trying to see where I'm going to go, feeling disappointed. Just all the emotions <laughs> that go through you when you, you know, things haven't gone the way you planned it or thought it should go. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was in my poor me's for about six months. Mm. then depressed for another year, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. then popped out of it. Well, not popped out of it, with the help of therapists and mm -hmm. actually people over at LSU, Shelly Molinex, shout out to you, um, and just going through that. Um, and I know a lot, and, you know, when you're going through that shit, you think you're the only one that's ever going through it. No one else has gone through it. This is just happening to me. It's just happening to me. And then you come out of your isolation is what I call it because <laughs> I ain't want to see nobody. I ain't want nobody to see me. Time was like time for me was like two days. I would think two days have passed. It'd be two months. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Like it, it was just crazy. Yeah. Right. So and I know we all bro like you know go through that. So you've gone through that by the grace of God. Thank God. We I've gone through it through the grace of God. Thank mm -hmm. God. Um and I think you and I have talked a bunch in your office when you was with Ogeron and just us weight room, whatever, um, about our mental and how we, you deal with young men, I deal with young men and how we try to, don't worry about they physical, mm -hmm. but what's going on mentally, what's going on at home, what's going on here, you know, because everybody see, these kids and they think, okay, they're just a bad kid or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, but there's a lot going on with them. So for you, I know you've dealt with the guys at LSU, uh, guys in the community here, as well as in, in, in Lake Charles, every time you get a chance to uh, put your hands on somebody or spread your story, spread your word, encouragement, I know you do it. What's, besides the bringing in money for LSU, um, working with those guys right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. right now where you are with, and I know it mean I know what you want to get back to, but what's next for you? Because I know this, 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 this bringing in money, funds, mm -hmm. ain't that ain't it? So part of it, yeah. I mean, it, it you know, it, it's part of my, it's part of my journey, because I'd never done sales before, um, not in this capacity. And when I was finished my 13 years in the league, I owned five businesses, so my transition was pretty easy. You know, I you know I just continued to you know run my businesses and. Eddie, you a smart motherfucker, dog. I can't say that. I, no, I mean, you know, let me my, tell you something because it is, uh, and I'm just saying, <laughs> no, nah, we ain't smart in every, not in every. You know what I'm saying? We all got our fault. But what I'm saying is, in what you're talking about, as far as like taking care of your business while you're in the league and preparing yourself to get out. That's smart, dog. Right. Like, a lot of people did not do that. Right, no question. And I think that if you had a lot more guys... I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not just talking about everybody else. Uh, I think that if you had a lot of guys that have done that, you would not have what the broke rate is in the NFL. Right. And right. we all know that. So I, that's why I say I'm not... I'm not, I say shit sometimes, it sounds funny, but I'm dead serious. Like, right. the, I, I, my hat's off to you for that. It's not too many guys that can say while they were, and the best time to do it is when you're in, because that's when people kiss your feet and cater to you the most. And they and they writing you, you those, know? Those, those weekly checks. Exactly. So, so exactly. it's a lot easier. But nah, where, you were but, smart, dude. Yeah, but where I am now, uh, you know, this part of sales, I can't say that this is something I'm going to do for the rest of my life. But this is a transition that I'm learning this aspect of things with LSU and for LSU. And uh, I'm, I'm not bigger or smaller than anything. It's a learning process. Uh, for one, you know, for me to understand how LSU make their revenue other than just getting selling tickets or selling season tickets. Uh, so it gives me an opportunity to dig deep and see what's happening and what's going on. And also, I don't know what my kids are going to do. So if I'm well-versed, if, if one of my boys, I have three sons, if one of my boys decide that they their business is going to be, yeah, they, they, they athletes, and that they're going to be in business or be in sales or something like that, I want to make sure that I'm well-versed for them. You know so, I knew your sons was fast, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah I know the They get it from their mama. But, yeah, all right. but it, here's, 
But that's you ask me what's point. next for me. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that where I am now, Ro, I'm about to be 50 years old. Really? And the, the thing where I am now is that every person that I come in contact with, I try to meet them where they are. I don't care if you're five years old or if you're 75 years old. And what I mean by meet them where they are, too many times through my experiences in life, I try to tell even my sons, I try to tell them this is what you should do. Well, guess what? They're not like me. Right. They're not going to travel the same road that I've traveled. 100%. My responsibility is, is to meet them where they are and dig deep enough where they tell me what direction they want to go or that they God. plan on going, and I help God. God. I tell my kids all the yeah. time, my job it's to guide you, encourage you, and love you. Yeah. And then what you do after that, that's on you, dog. Yeah. I'm going to give you my best you advice. That's on you, yeah. dog. Yeah, yeah. That's on you. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know if it's going to end up like that. And then if it doesn't end up like that, now you upset with me because you said it was supposed to be this way. No, that's you know? like you, you you had them coaches or had them players that was like, man, I don't like that coach. You treat, you treat him different than he treat me. She is. He better treat him different. Everybody different. Everybody different. I don't believe in you treat everybody the same way. You love them the when same. When it comes treat to football, that's exactly right. You can love them all the same, but they're gonna get treated different. Cause you know why? You see that cat that's catching them touchdowns for me, and he dependable, and he going to class and all that, and you <laughs> dropping touchdown passes. You know who I'm going to? Him. That's just what it is. That's how it goes. <laughs> so hey, that's it, it's just that cut and dry. Right. It's just that cut and dry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let me ask you, the tri- you want to touch and impact and your journey with this um, sales, being from where you are coming from, the staff, now you're in this position as a sales, do you think that for you to do what you want to do, to impact the lives that you want to impact, is it eventually getting back to being around those young men? So this isn't this isn't a politically correct answer. This is just where I am. In I don't want no politically correct. I just no, want no. what you. I no, want your truth. I'm, I'm telling you because it will sound like it's a politically correct answer. Okay. And it's and it's not that at all. And if you know me well enough, as you get to know me, you'll be like, yeah, that's that cat. Where I am in my life is God guides everything that I do. And I'm patient. I do my best to be patient in this season of my life. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I I can't tell you five minutes from now what's going to happen. I don't even know if I'm going to be here in five minutes. But what I can do is live in the moment that I'm living in right now. And I embrace it. And I take this moment on and I say, all right, this is a good, this is a good feeling. Or oh, I'm not feeling good. How do I change it? So whatever is in the future, it's already victory. God already got it. Oh, it's there for you, baby. It's already there. So whatever it is, I know it's victory. And I go beyond even this life. And I say victory because if I die right now, guess where I'm going? Victory. I'm going to heaven. That's victory. Say victory. Yeah. So and it's Well, a, are you when I hear you talk like that, because what I when I hear you say that, what comes to me and what first things comes to me, what you say is faith. That's it. That's what, um, because when you say I'm not worried about tomorrow, or I'm not worried about five minutes from now, all this that's what it says to me. I feel similar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's your faith. That's it. Like, you ain't worrying about nothing else. You living in the moment. You dealing with that's your faith, and that's your faith in God. And I, I'm, I'm similar in that situation where you just you ain't worrying about nothing. You ain't worrying about nothing. You just dealing with the <laughs> president it, right now. That's it. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you with that. I'm with, so give hey, we got we, we got to end with the segment with Ed, but that give me a prediction, Ed. Give me a prediction, dog. For I know you ain't been over there and you ain't seen him and all that, but give me a prediction. You know what what they up against. Mm-hmm. You know who's returning, who's not returning from us as well as everybody else. Mm-hmm. You privy, you've been there with them. Right. Give me a give me a give me a, give me a record. They don't tell me oh this, <laughs> oh that. I want numbers. 
numbers like six and six, five and six, three and eight, eight and three. Well, twelve and zero. No, they definitely ain't gonna be twelve. And 0. <laughs> just, 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 just looking at our schedule and, and looking at looking at the the games on our schedule and the games that we should win. Right, right. right. The games that we should win. We should win. We should right. win, Coach Kelly. We we gonna. I think we'll be. I think we'll be at least a five hundred team. Who you heard it here? Hey. Wait a minute now. You ain't hear it. You we just heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know what, bro? Like, because I know you considering all the factors and everything that goes into it. I mean, year one. Year one. Our schedule. I say we, we're 500 team this year. Not, not even seeing them practice or seeing the talent or just seeing knowing the just, landscape of what's out there right and how hard it is to come in turn the program the first year or that i'm with you dog i'm with you i'm definitely i, I agree i agree <laughs> I, I think it's gonna be a little tough sledding i think it's a, i think you know it's gonna be a little tough sledding i think you're gonna have to get them boys in line with what's going on but i hope for the best i hope for the best yeah. i hope for the best we'll see We'll see. We will see. So what you say, six, 500? 500. Six and six? I hope they prove me wrong, but I'm going to say 500. They going six and six. Whew. Dwayne, what you say? I think we got a better routine. Who? You think you're going to win nine? We got to get, hold on. We, we're going to come. We're going to take a break and come back to you because I don't even know what you're talking about. We're going to take a break, come back. Jay got to get her crab legs, go put them in the oven. We're gonna be back. We're gonna be back, Stu. We're gonna take a break. We gotta get we gotta get Eddie Kane some beverages, a little water or something. We'll be back on where my dog's at. Oh, you come on in. Um, I was I was excited to come to uh, a top level program. I've been at a lot of great places. I've um, been very fortunate in my career, but to really say that um, you have an opportunity every year, uh, once obviously once we get it rolling to win a national championship, um, there's not very many places that you could say that. So for him to offer me the opportunity to come with him to LSU um, was nothing but but you know humility and, and gratitude. Point. 
Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana, uh, who know and believe in our hearts that this place produces the best football players in the country, you know, and I think the numbers speak for themselves per capita, produce the most NFL players, you know what I mean? So even from an analytical standpoint, it makes sense to take the kids from here because the chances of them playing the league are higher than if they come from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I think our brand is super powerful, so we will have to recruit at a national level or there's really no reason that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because if we can get a top player from another state who can help us win a championship, then of course, right? But um, I think it starts right here in Louisiana and then right here in Baton Rouge. You know, mm -hmm. there's some really good players who are still available that are right here in Baton Rouge. But this opportunity was different. Um, you have a chance to come to a place with unbelievable tradition, uh, work for the winningest head coach in college football. Um, just be at a state. I've never been at a state where yeah. football's king. Uh, you know, and it, it, if you just dominate your state, you're going to get some of the best players that there are. Sure. Uh, this show in particular, highlighting uh, the players that I've seen come through here and, and the coaches, we're, we're grateful to uh, have the opportunity. I remember going to the Tennessee camp. Oh, this man, is a great story. And I had locked everybody up. Yeah. Like, literally, I was licking my chops, yeah. and I'm like, yo. Jarvis and Adele were there, right? Everybody was there. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm, all y'all get in line. Like, everybody, come on. I'm going to go I'm rep. getting back in line. <laughs> I'm going to go rep after rep. And right. then it really kind of turned into a show where none of the right. DBs wanted to go. Yeah. <laughs> none of the receivers wanted to go. It was literally, then it turned to me and Jarvis. Right. Just one-on-one. -on -one, you know what I mean? So, uh In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Do you suffer from chronic dehydration? Are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at GoFlow IV? They're located on Jefferson Highway. Easy to find them online at geauxflowiv.com. Make sure and use the promo code Jordy Collada Show. If you do, they'll take 15% off of your initial visit. Check them out online, geauxflowiv.com. So, see, if, 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 if he's going to come out and do that every time, well, now, and now come back and backtrack and try to call Jimbo, you know, that I talked to Jimbo personally about this, and their friendship was a friendship that was more uh, professional, yeah, you know what I mean, professional, uh, not we're going to spend time in the off season and with our families and all that bullshit, it was you know, very professional. You coach for me. We learn from each other. That type of thing. We know each other's bullshit. Also, I know your bullshit. You know mine. So why would you bring that up? You know what I mean? Why would you open up that can when now they gonna dig into your shit? So now they gonna dig into all the bullshit. Guys could come out that's disgruntled with you. Could come out and say all kind of bullshit. Guys that you just offered that bag to that didn't take it and went somewhere else and took the other bag, now they could come out and say, you know what I mean? It's just all that shit. So why not keep it, keep keep, keep all that in house? And the coach is the most important play in this whole thing with these guys. Because one is new offenses, then guys are younger, guys are coming from different systems, coming from different everywhere. So the one that, that's the other fact that's going to come into this. Whoever picks this shit up the fastest? Whoever picks this it's up the even playing field. Yeah, 100%. Even playing field, because you talk about Miles Brennan having experience. He's had, what, four different coordinators in four years? Yeah, but that helps him also. Uh, yeah, because that's <laughs> yeah. just different terminology at that point. I've seen it all. Yeah. Uh, bring back the Joe Brady one. That one worked. That one, that one seemed to work. Yeah, you adapt, man. You adapt. You adapt to it. And and Nussmeyer, by him coming, his dad being a coach and coming from um, that pedigree and that background, 
this is also something that he should be comfortable with. I know he's young, but learning different terminology, um, concepts are basically the same. It's just different know, verbiage. Curl flat is curl flat. Goals is goals. You know what I mean? It's just different terminology. So that type of thing for them should get picked up pretty easily um, from Nuss, Meyer, from all those guys. All those guys are smart guys. Miles, all those guys. They should pick that up pretty, pretty swiftly. But Nuss, Meyer's advantage in this whole thing is, I mean, without a doubt, it's legs. Without a doubt, it's confidence. You know, without a doubt, his ability, and he actually reads defenses pretty good right now for the stage that he is in in his young, young, young career. He picks up defenses and goes to the right part, right place with the ball pretty good. His problem is getting them feet in line all the time or going to, because he's so athletic. You know what I mean? So sometimes he just relies strictly on that quick twitch and getting that ball out, but he has to get his feet lined up. And also with him, he has to work on that accuracy, accuracy as well. Here we are back. We are back. Oh, man, another time, man. Fletcher Payton. Thank you, Fletcher Payton, my dog, Fletcher Payton. Uh, that boy, uh, 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 Dave, David, build my boy David, man. Big dog over there with the building. I'll give a shout out to my main man, and Cypress Hemp, um, for everything they do for this show. Hey, we just had my big, the big dog, Eddie Kennison, in here, man. Eddie and that Kane. was Eddie Kane, shout baby. And, him. hey, and that was... That was a good interview. Eddie yeah. gave us some perspective on, you know, for yeah, him, a lot, huh? Like, like for him to be thinking about, like, what got me was him thinking about being, being a like a a owner. owner of the team as a That's rookie. What, you know, what? a lot of guys, like even now, like this twenty twenty two, that was that ninety. What, 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 what year he, got, he went out? He what went, year he came out? Ninety ninety eight? Well, well, no, he said nah, he before 92. that, like ninety six. So ninety five. Ninety five. In ninety five, I was born in ninety six. Because I got the LSU in ninety seven. He was gone two That's years. So ninety five. So you you think about guys in the league right now? This guys no. that ain't even thinking about that now. And they getting way more money than they was way getting. Way more 90, money. Ninety five. That's why I told him that. That's why I stopped him that. when he said that and was like, "What? You was thinking about that? Owning the team? Oh, like you was thinking about how the owners cutting the checks or how much bread they got? Like, I want to think about that, dog. And that's why I said, "Hold up, you know, I want to think about that." So yeah, the great Eddie Kennison man was even. <laughs> that boy was thinking about generational wealth. His rookie I mean, year. That, that should be a guy. I mean, to me, that should be a guy that LSU should. Keep on staff and have him mentoring the young guys and yeah, letting them know, bro. like, look, you about to go to the That's league. Where they up at. You know, you yeah. you you supposed right. to. This is what you need You're to be right. thinking about: starting right. businesses, starting things for your family, for generational wealth. Like he said, not but, rich, wealth. Well, but you know, the other thing you can tell for Eddie Kane is that he definitely have been through some things. He mm -hmm. definitely have. Mature. Uh, mature and he's gotten closer to the good lord from 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 just every conversation that spewed out his mouth just now being in here and we like you know i know you guys have heard or seen his little story of you know the things that he's going through so it was man listen i always great to have a great eddie kennison in the building baby i see you just flash j love plate just now you know what i'm saying huh child please here we go here we go. We, we hey, we got a new addition. Uh -oh. We got a, the, the big dog, uh -oh. the big uh -oh. dog in the corner. I don't see nothing in his hand though. Uh -oh. I thought he, <laughs> thought he supposed to have something in his hand. He couldn't sit down in that corner over there like that. Oh Lord, what's going on? What if y'all y'all listen, let me bring y'all back. Couple weeks ago. Oh Lord, let's get a close up. Couple <laughs> weeks ago, this young lady here was out with her dad and took a picture. And she said her picture was hot. So we posted it, put it out there to see <laughs> if everyone else agreed. <laughs> that, that is insane. <laughs> so, 
Wait, y'all see that live clip? Hold on. Y'all see that? Hey. Oh. Ooh. Don't play with her. The juice oh, dripping on. Oh, say that for you and him? <laughs> so he said it's dripping the juice. Ooh. Yeah, I like the so we put it on the internet, right, <laughs> to see was the picture hot or not. And we told Jay that if she get, what was it, 75% light? Yes, and I got 90. Don't eat the mic, though. Don't eat the <laughs> mic. Don't eat the mic. We did see it. Okay? We saw it. <laughs> so she got, what you got, 80? 90. Damn, really? I'm like that. Can we confirm that? We confirm yeah, she got that, Stu? Stu always on your side, by the way. Let me see. She did get 90. Mean? So she got 90. And uh, we all chipped in, and she got a big old platter. Including the great Kevin Falk, Kevin in Jamaica right now, so you know we we, we put it in. Feezy and now he just hey, laid. Feezy. You know where he at, baby? That boy laid back on one of them on one of them bamboo rafts right now. I'm talking about he got something about this short <laughs> hanging out the side. Of his lip. Right about this show. You understand? <laughs> that hey, what you call that croak? That that that, that, that crow thing? That, that three three seven thing. pack. That three <laughs> three three seven pack. So, Jay, where your food? Are you got to heat it up? Yeah, I had ate a little bit earlier. It was good, but. So what 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 sauce? Where'd you get it from first? We gotta got shout it. out where you got it from now. Shout out uh, Sammy's Crawfish King number three, right over there on North Foster. Sammy's Crawfish King. I usually get uh, seafood other places, but they got that lobster tail and it's real good. I ain't never ate that. I ain't never been there, so you ain't like, hey, talking about. Hey, check this out, Sammy. What's the name of him? Sammy's Crawfish King. You Sam find on Facebook. Sammy, Sammy nah, they better bring something else over here. We putting them, putting, shouting them out we like this. I ain't trying to tell nobody promotion. on no Facebook to go get no it. No free pub. No yeah, free pub. Yeah, Sammy's, no Sammy's who again? Sammy's Crawfish. Crawfish King. Sammy's Crawfish King. Check this out. Appreciate y'all taking care of our wonderful, wonderful girl, Jay. But we all need that. We need you to come on up in here next, next, next Thursday. Come on up in here next Thursday. Sammy's Crawfish King, whoever owns it, whoever is a manager, whatever, whoever. Come on up in here. We need you up in here and, and come on and bring. We need one, two, three, four, five of them. We need five of those with the lobster. I take a lobster too. Come on in here. So what we got hot topics this week, dog? What we got on hot topics this week? There's a lot to talk about. They were um talking Russell about Russell Brick Brook West Brick. West Brick. They were talking about um <laughs> West Brick. Man, nobody care about no triple double when you losing. When you when you lose it. But they was talking about uh, Melo versus Andre Iguodala. Who? Like their career, basically. The career greatness. Who? Melo versus. Carmelo Anthony and oh. Andre Iguodala. That's disrespectful to Melo. Melo and Andre in the same category. Wow, how many, how many rings Melo got? All right, but rings. Rings how, a bit different. How many rings Melo got? Melo, Melo never played with Curry and KD. How many Melo rings does Andre Iguodala have? Uh, three. So what I'm saying is, what's the comp what are we comparing that that overall it. career? Yeah, overall Cause career. Because Melo has been a consensus starter in the league That's damn near his entire career. Andre Iguodala was a starter he's a in the beginning, player. but he's always been a uh, an exceptional six man. Yeah. He's always been an exceptional exceptional team guy yeah. with clutch performances and clutch. I don't, know, clutch why I don't two. know why they compare the two of them. Honestly, I don't think it's a good comparison. Yes. <laughs> it's really different. Really, I do. I think it's a very different. I don't I, have they played the same number of years in the no. league? Uh uh. No, Melo been in the league since like old four. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah, understand. Like I don't understand the comparison because I'm and I'm not gonna even say Andre Iguodala is a journeyman, but he's been on multiple teams. Yeah. It's not like he's been a, a starter on one club his entire almost his entire career. Like Melo. You you think about Melo, what you think about? Think about him with the Knicks. And That's the what I'm nuggets, saying. Him with the Nuggets. That's what I'm saying. I think about him with the Nuggets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then being with the Knicks. Those are the two teams that I associate Carmelo Anthony yeah. with. That's when he, that was his prime. Fucking Andre Dollar. I associate him with everybody. <laughs> and not, not, a, not a knock on him because I think he's a fantastic player. But... Him and Melo, I mean, that's, I don't. That's that's disrespectful to Melo, and it's no yeah, disrespect kinda. to Iguodala. No, not at all. Iguodala, the thing is, hey, dog, you can't be over there talking and, and no, nobody, no, you, you gotta go over there, dog. <laughs> Look, 
Here's here's the thing. Tell the people who you are. They don't know you. Look, hey, if y'all know me. That's the big dog. I'm just playing yeah, I'm at the big, big dog. dog. But uh, my name TJ Polk, you know. If y'all don't know, just follow me on Instagram. Follow you know, the boy. The boy's a TJ genius. Polk, the boy yeah. everywhere. I'm it, it, Mr. LSU. So Mr. Everything know. right there, the big dog. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think the difference that separates the two, like, Carmelo is a superstar as we see. He came in 03. They shouldn't the even United. be in the same. But, but look at it. Andre Iguodala makes everybody around him better, and that's what, that's what, well, that's the separator. Man. How hard is it for you to make the people around him that he's playing with, though? That's what I'm saying. Like, Andre, it's a whole different damn thing we're talking about. Carmelo Anthony has the responsibility of carrying a team. Yeah. Had a responsibility mm -hmm. of scoring the points. Mm -hmm. Had a responsibility of being the face of the organization. Mm -hmm. And at one time, he was almost the face of the NBA. Yeah, like, I mean, Andre, I, Andre Iguodala has never been in. And like I said, this is no damn shade towards no, Andre Iguodala. Because he's a fantastic basketball player. But him and Carmelo Anthony, they're not in the same Tier. Yeah, that's, that's a great word, OP. Tier. They're not in the, same, not the tier. same tier. So I'm, I don't know how you compare them. They've had different pressures Every, you know, when they are in the same same tier, and Melo last three years yeah, right yeah. now. You know what I mean? That's why they probably compare them. Like, yeah, but that's like, that's a dis like y'all said. That's disrespectful to yeah, Melo, dog. So I try my dog, Melo, dog. Melo trying to get his girl back. He trying to get out of the media. <laughs> that ain't no way. No way. He's still he trying to cheating. get his girl. Back. He's sending flowers to other bitches. <laughs> you can say that on him. <laughs> he oh he did. Yeah, she posted. Oh, a weeks ago. Lord, she's talking about she received his flowers. It was a, I mean, they took up the whole living room. Just big old bouquet. Well, that boy got them M's he now. He can't the, play yeah, with him. He can't play with him now. He got them M's, baby. He, he, he thought he, that was just hey, a dozen. Hey, he can't send it like it's you and me. <laughs> yeah, no. You feel me? We, like, we, he got it. We going, to, uh, we going to get them Costco flowers. <laughs> nah, I ain't, I'm not going to do that Costco. Nah, I'm going to go to Billy Harriman. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna That's right that. across the street. Hey, she I'm going to do my girl that. better no, than that. My, she my, she got to be giving it to me. I you. feel like I deserve them flowers. What, oh. Billy Harriman? That may be some shade. You talking about uh -huh. one of our viewers. The Infinity Flowers. Oh, the she wants flowers that never die. Yeah, but that's all. The flowers don't never die. You want but the man be, feelings yeah. don't but never look, die. If you if I get you them infinity flowers, motherfucker, you gotta stay here till infinity. Don't keep the flowers. Nah, that's and what let I'm trying go. to tell you. The flowers is just flowers. You hear me? Now if them infinity shit is a is an extension of that guy's heart, that's a different story. <laughs> but it's not. It's not. That's what I'm saying, dog. We might have to take a little break here in a second. <laughs> I was just playing. I was just playing. I was just playing. Where your food at? What we got up next, man? On the on the on the on the, on the hot topic. What else so we got? We was talk watching uh, Jamarcus. Stewie, can we get something up on the thing? We got Jamarcus. Well, no, no. We were talking about um, Jamarcus Russell on the pivot, but I didn't want to talk about that yet. I want to talk about what Shannon Crowder said on the pivot about what he like, said. He was talking about how when he was uh, with the Dolphins and he had brought strippers to the facility for Nick Saban. What? What? Bro, you didn't hear this? But his <laughs> Pull it up! No, he, he don't have a video. Okay, he don't so have a video. Got, like, quote, but he, he was just saying the on the pivot. You gotta show me this. He was saying his rookie year, his rookie, his rookie. Uh, he said he bought strippers to the facility for Coach Saban. So you Saban? know how the, you know okay, the rookies gotta do their thing. Oh, oh, oh. You have to do oh, your thing talking, as a rookie, right? Oh, he talking about for like the little rookie thing <laughs> yeah, where they got to set it off. He brought, okay. he brought some strippers and made them dance with Nick Saban in his office. He said. Oh, for real? He said Nick Saban took off running. This he said. Listen, I'm reading to you. He said she walked in there with nothing but a thong on and a Jason Taylor jersey. And she went up there. Nick Saban was in a chair. She shook it for Nick Saban. Nick Saban grabbed her heels, pushed her to the side, and ran up the stairs. Lord have mercy. That is fantastic. She shook it for Coach Saban. That is fantastic. That boy said she shook it for Coach Saban. <laughs> she shook it for Coach Saban. That's what, it, that's what he said. Hey, she shook boy. it for Nick Saban. Now, let she me tell you. Now, that is the best shit I've heard. So, he bought. Nick Saban. So, Shannon Crowder bought him one of them straight. You know, they probably coming straight out of Coco Rolex or the <laughs> King of Diamonds. You know, I forgot what he said her name was. Where she came from. What the oh, name was. What he said her name was. Dwayne Dumars in the chat said, comparing. Comparing uh, Carmelo Anthony and Andre Iguodala is like comparing John Saley to Reggie Miller. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Dwayne Dumars. Du Dwayne Dumars. Beautiful, my friend. 
<laughs> Beautiful, my friend. That is that is perfection. It is. I agree with Dwayne. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's let's not her. let's stop disrespecting yeah, Melo. John Saley won't like that. John Saley won't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's not. So it's really a perfect comparison. Who? John Saley won four NBA championships, so it's really a perfect comparison. Like twenty six. Yeah. No, listen, and this that's the thing. That's like that's like that's like. Rondo got the hardest album cover picture. Who? Rajon Rondo got the hardest basketball album picture if you want to call it, and he didn't hop from team to team to team. He but Rondo, but he had, Rondo had a championship in Boston, and so he I mean, he can't, turn them he can't, right? He can't like you can't say like Rondo because Rondo, Rondo was made. Rondo with, a gangster, right? Yeah, Rondo, Rondo been made since the Boston days. Rondo a gangster, dog. So it ain't like right. He a and the other he, thing about Rondo that's different than like Andre Iguodala, when Rondo go, Rondo start. Rondo. Yeah. Gone. You feel me? Rondo and then the, and then the other thing you uh, the other thing the other thing that's a compare but you know what though Andre Iguodala and, and, and Ray John Rondo ain't a bad comparison though. I mean them two kind of close. Yeah, that ain't a bad comparison yeah, that's, that's though. That's close. Yeah, that's, because, that's better than because and also yeah. both of them are clutch performers. Like both of them, yeah. people pick them up. To add to the team later for a run, right? Like, like, because like, they know Andre Iguodala come off the bench, that bitch gonna lock you down defensively. He gonna hit that fucking spot up jumper. And he gonna leadership. Like, that's what control, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. It's a locker room guy. Yeah. That's like when they say we're gonna bring in this veteran quarterback to tutor. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. You, uh, you bringing him in because he brings that to the table, and you understand how to be a professional. Speaking of veteran quarterbacks, your boy J. Rock, Jamarcus Russell. He talked about on the Pivot podcast. He talked about how they didn't Oakland didn't give him the tools to be successful. They didn't, and they they got rid of the two veteran quarterbacks that they did have, and Jeff Garcia and I don't know who the other. Well, guy I was think Jeff picture. Garcia, but that was the guy that they wanted. That that was the guy that he felt should help him. I think, and then Jeff, Jeff Garcia kind of rubbed J Rock the wrong way too. Yeah, I think he I, said he was working out listen, with him, but he wasn't working out with him. I Something think like that. I think that what people and I and I, people get it misconstrued, man. That think that everybody's there to help you. Yeah, you feel me? Like just because you on a team with whoever, I was fortunate to be there with Tom Brady, Damon Hewitt, uh, my big dog Miller, Jim Miller, which was one of the best actually taught me so much more. Jim Miller came from the Chicago Bears and came over to New England. And he taught me so much just about being a professional. But, dog, everybody don't help you. Yeah. yeah. And Ryan Tannehill said that, too. Like, when Malik Willis got drafted, exactly. he said, he said it's yeah. not and my job. And this the like, thing. It ain't his job. It's not. Because his job as the starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans like as a teammate, you would want to say, "Yes, I'm gonna help you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tutor you. I'm gonna do this." But dog, you trying to take my job? Yeah, but I'm see, I think minutes. Jamarcus should have kind of learned his lesson because he also told a story about when he was at LSU, and he said that when he got here, he was Matt Mark roommate, and he said when he got the playbook, everything you know how they give you the playbook the first day, woo do woo. He was like, you know, Matt, you know, I got. I got some questions, you know, you can help me with this, this, and that. And Matt was like, shit, I ain't here to help you. I'm trying to learn my plays myself. You know what I'm saying? So he should have learned his lesson. That should have been his first lesson. Like, look, this dude ain't here to help Yeah, me. no doubt. I'm here to win the job. Yeah, but I think that, like, when you – go ahead. Like, everybody not your friend when you step on that field. No, I mean, listen, yeah, dog, like – Exactly. You got to you gotta understand, like what, Ke- like, what Eddie was talking about when he was here. You got to understand the job side of it. Mm. You got to understand the perfect. I remember one time, dog, like my rookie year, I was talking to my mom, and I was like, all right, mom, I'll holler at you later. I got to go to work. And my mom asked me, where you work at? And, you know what I mean? Like, that's the mentality of some people. Like, they think you're playing football. And even you as a, you, even you as a player, sometimes you're like, I play football. But it's a job. Yeah, and, like, every, like, that's why he was talking about, like, the thing he had to learn the most was understanding it was a job. It was a business. It's a business and a job. Yeah, right. A business because you have to change your mindset and the mentality for that shit. And that's exactly what we talking about. That's what J Rock talking about. But you know, when you get drafted first round, when you get drafted first pick, right? His his point that he was trying to make was, bro, everybody else. And other organizations, because, dog, you don't think it's a friend. Them guys talk to each other. 
You get drafted first pick, they look at you as the face of the league, fake, not, not, probably not the face of the league, but probably, but definitely face of the organization, especially if you're a quarterback. You feel me? At the quarterback position. So he was expecting everything to, and everybody else to be on board with the decision of drafting him first. And what he realized was the only person that was on board with that decision was the motherfucker that made all the decisions that you couldn't say anything to. Yeah. And that was Big Al. Yeah. <laughs> but Everybody he else. But he couldn't do what he used to do because he was, because he was on his way. His exactly. Yeah. Girl, go get your food. Where your food at? It's you ain't hungry? Mm-mm. And then everybody else was like they weren't on board with him being successful and they couldn't even get out the way with them with the organization because they did not agree with him being a pick. No, they they, they didn't want him. No. You were still in the league at that time? Yeah. Oh, so what was the what was the what was the league consensus around J Rock at that time? I know that was probably a little bro to you. That's my dog, right. man. Right. So, That's my so guy. You, you you know what I'm saying? You probably had a different view of how everybody else was speaking. The thing about, about it you know is this, saying? dog. And the statement is true. You've heard it your whole life. You cannot judge anyone until you walk in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Right. You feel me? You cannot judge anyone until you walk in their shoes. Middle America cannot judge Jamarcus, Mar- Jamarcus Russell until you walk in their shoes. 2% America cannot judge Jamarcus Mar- Russell until you walk in their shoes. Until you lose one of the most important p- people to you. Until you get to a situation and you find out there's nobody there that's for you. When motherfuckers putting things in place to... Right. systematically get you up out of there or to systematically show that you know what we were all right yeah. he is he uh, is not this he can't they were fighting defense. against this young man he can't, he can't you win. understand what you i'm saying I mean? yeah i feel you now just think about another situation where you have a, a aaron Rodgers who was able to sit back behind a brett Favre, who was able to learn who was able to sit there and understand the scope of everything that was going on, who had the opportunity. That's why when people, that's why I say you cannot judge until you walk in that person's shoes, my dog. And there's a plethora of things, and I'm not making excuses. Jamarcus made some bad decisions along the way. Naturally, you have to own up for that. But for these Monday morning quarterbacks and for everybody to sit back and just judge a young man based on the trials and tribulations that they go through at 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, and you coming out of a place and you're, you're a confidant and the people that you trust the most are not there anymore, and you playing with M's on top of M's and you ain't never played with M's on top of M's like that no more, and everybody is there pulling from you to take from you, to, to extort you, to do everything they can to get their hands on everything that has to do with your well-being, your mental your money to try to make themselves put themselves in a better situation for themselves the trust that you have for people goes flying out the door dog and that's what jamarcus experienced going through all that and that's what a lot of athletes experience going through all that you know what i'm saying yeah but i feel like though i feel as though and come say what you want to say you know i i don't want to be the race guy but to me Based on the track record of the NFL and of these organizations, the black, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's the owner, whether it's the G, well, we don't even got no owners, but the GM, whatever they, they, it is. They have one owner. They, one on, well, Miami. Yeah, the one owner, whether it's the coach, it's like we always get all the shitty pieces. We always get everything, the puzzle broken. We don't never get the opportunity that Aaron Rodgers had to have Brett Favre. We don't ever get the opportunities for the coaches that get called up and then the team go and win 10, 12, 13 games. And we don't never get those opportunities. We always get the fix it opportunities. And then we don't fix it and then they call us a bust or he didn't live up to the hype or he, he didn't reach the expectation. But that's just how I see it. Well, you know, the thing is, you all, and, and I've been hearing this ever since I've been involved in this sports in this business um you have to at some point dog own and fairly sooner than later you have to at some point own up to 
the shit that you did to put yourself in those situations. And after you acknowledged and you right the wrong, so to speak, now you have to go and do the things necessary for you to come out of it and to be successful. And, and success may not be in the NFL. You know, I saw this point the other day that was talking about Colin Kaepernick, and I've been said this about Colin Kaepernick. Once Colin Kaepernick, and I'm a, I'm a fan of Colin Kaepernick as the stance he took, um, the fraternity as a black quarterback. Um, but as far as the player and um, the guy that still, even to this day, that wants to continue to try to get an opportunity to play um, football and to get an opportunity to be on the team, some things, especially now, I understood it, um, you know, when it first went down, still wanting to play. But some things are bigger than football, are bigger than sports, bigger than the championship. And in my opinion, Colin Kaepernick became a really good quarterback after Jim, when Jim Harbaugh was there. And then after Jim Harbaugh left, some other things with him got exposed. But right now, with Colin Kaepernick, it's bigger than football. It's more of the message and what he's been trying to do since he took that knee. So the football part of it for him, man, cancel that. Cancel football. If you was going to be let back into the league or a big protest and all this was going to happen for you to get back into the league, that would have happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And right now, honestly, that shit has passed him by as far as, like, your skills. Listen, you can't. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's over AB with. said it best. Who? What did he say? Antonio Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Shit over with. He said it best. Mm. What did he say, yeah. OP? A, uh, you say it. Oh, you say it. <laughs> a, a, B said he took the, the hand out, so now he got to take the man, man route. route. You got to take the man route. It's real. I, I feel the same way, bro. It's real. Like, you can't get on this side, get on that side, and then want to get back on this side. Bro. And listen, he said that on the pivot, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not tripping about your stance. I love your stance and all that, but you got to understand your stance got you blackballed. Admit it or not, your stance got you blackballed. You want to <laughs> now work for the people you took the stands on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you came and hollered at me and, my, and I'm your employee, Stu, and you go out there and protest against me, I'm not letting you back in my building. Yeah. Bad for even though I may, even if, even if I respect what you're yeah. doing, hey, I learned my lesson. You feel me? Even if I respect what you're doing, I'm not about to let you back in the building. It's bad for business. You know what I'm it's bad for business. Can't go back bad in that business. You know what I mean? So, I think, like I said, man, it's bigger than football for college. Go ahead and you done got your bread from whoever that side continue your fight and continue to push that but the football part of it because you know for me you keep pushing the football you keep pushing the football you keep pushing the football part like the football part of it for me and i don't think for a lot of people it's not even that probably not that big anymore you know what i mean like it's not like once a quarter especially a quarterback once a quarterback is out of a system and you have no more play in the nfl and you've been two three four years out that shit over with man it's too many draft picks. It's too many that they came. And, and uh, honestly, it's too hard for you to get back into it and get to slinging it the way you did. And Colin Kaepernick was a mobile quarterback at the time where at the time, guys weren't flying around like they are now. He really, he really put, like, being a mobile quarterback and, and that whole play type on, on – on the map. He ain't put that shit on the map, man. What you talking about? Bitch, you forgot about Michael Vick? Yeah, I was Michael Vick, then no. Vick was gone. And, and we ain't was talking about no Colin Kaepernick, dog. TJ. There's a whole bunch of motherfuckers came. Hey, listen, man. There's a whole bunch of people. Oh, yeah. He came before Kaepernick. Dog. He came before Kaepernick. Dog. Listen, there's a whole. Kaepernick came before Kaepernick. Cam Newton was still there. 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 Cam Newton was still
2000. No, Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick wait, nah, Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick ain't put no mobile quarterbacks on no, the ground. Ka- no, Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick went to the Super Bowl. Colin Kaepernick did not put mobile quarterbacks on the map. It was 2012. It was 12 because it was New Orleans. Colin Kaepernick did not put mobile quarterbacks on the map. He was a part of that. Colin Kaepernick did not put mobile quarterbacks on the map. You can't even say that. He did not put mobile quarterbacks on the cap. It was it was Vic. It was Vic. They, they all was. Man, it was Vic. You, you could go back before Michael Vick and go to Randall Cunningham. Like you could go yeah. back, my dog. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick did not put mobile yeah. quarterbacks on the map. He didn't do it. Wasn't him. He was a continuation of him, but it wasn't Colin Kaepernick. You know what I'm saying? And Colin Kaepernick, honestly, bro, he got to put a lot of his su- success towards. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the name, Jim. Jim? Yeah, and he Jim? he he was just on a good team at a good time, right? Because yeah. he had he had Joe Fl- Joe Flacco. I mean, not Joe Flacco. He had. Uh, We're talking about San Francisco. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, he was. He, he, he had he had a good wide receiving crew Vernon for real. Davis. He had uh, Torrey Smith on that. And not to say Colin was he was good. But Colin was a runner. But you know he what fell mean? off. He, had a, he did fall off the next year. Yeah, because Harbaugh left. His defense helped him too. Oh, then he did leave. He went to Michigan. Yeah. Like he, um, Colin, he, he was on the verge of being good, bro. He just needed. He needed Harbaugh to stay. Honestly, he needed Harbaugh to stay. What, Stu? <laughs> I'm good. Stu looking at the wood. Who? <laughs> looking at this. Stu fuck. I'm looking at the What we got, Jay? What else we got? What else we got? Let's talk. We got Russell Brick Book, West Brick. We ain't talking about West Brick. I didn't see that. What happened? Yeah, I, I didn't see nothing about West, West Brick. I just like the name. Oh, you just like that West Brick. Y'all, y'all ain't seen that. Hey, Brittany Griner. She, what, what, oh, this week? Man, we talked about that last week. How about was. Brittany Griner take the plea, dog? Brittany Griner plead guilty. Hey, but y'all see, I don't know how true it is, but hey. they say she got a, they say she got a, uh, they, that they want, there's somebody in the U.S. that the U.S. is holding. Yeah, they want to, they want to, they want to. So they want to do a prison swap. It's, yeah, they want to do the prison hey, swap for the hey, arms point, dealer. If it was Braun, they'd do it, though. <laughs> For the arms dealer, they want to get the Russian arms dealer out, but no, it hey, cha- that make all people nah, but get out people. but look, all that changed when she took the plea or not the plea, but she pled guilty. Now, let like she pled guilty. Now, they got a sentence. Like, what, 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 what? That's I, why I've been why. What is the sentence gonna be? Are they gonna send somebody over there to get it? Are they gonna barter the release with the arms dealer? Like, dude, I'm watching. I'm watching this thing by Brittany, like Brittany Griner, and her mental, dude. Her mental has to be like knowing no no that there, there, there's a language barrier, right? There's a a size barrier. There's a war barrier. There's a war barrier. The war is the biggest thing. And then the U.S. just dropped a ton of money on Ukraine. Bro. I hear a lot of people saying this shit about, you know, if it was LeBron. I think if it was LeBron, it'd be I think it'd, it'd be, be the harder. same situation. I think if it was LeBron, they'd try to even make more of a... Yeah, they hey, think about... They think like about... Five people like think yeah, about let, how they let out 30 crazy. of them. Yeah. Think about how they was going crazy when Baby and James Harden uh, got arrested. And when ASAP Rocky got uh, when they said Rocky, they think about all them dudes, man. They them other countries, they get a hold of our people. They know that them are the Extortion. people. They know that them are the people. Well, who I mean, I'm gonna use the most it too. Power and influence in our country. I'm gonna use it too to get the arms dealer out. Extortion. To get all the people out that we have over here that they don't want. I'm gonna go ahead and get them out too. If I was uh, Putin. Uh, what we got, Jay? We have uh, SEC Media Days next week. SEC Media okay. Days, yeah. Jimbo. You want to hear the... Yeah. You, you, you know the Jimbo roster? and Saban in the we same building. Huh? Jack Bish, Mike Jones Jr., and BJ Ojolari. That who we taking? Yeah. yeah. Mike dude. Jones Jr. He talks yeah. very well. Yeah, he BJ, is. He real good with the media. BJ Ojolari. Yeah, I'm a dog. I know I like BJ. That's a dog. Them Georgia yeah. boys, them Cobb County boys. Yeah, <laughs> we in here. Real Powder Springs, real Mayretta. Yeah, <laughs> Marietta. That 404. 
Talk you know, to me now. You, you don't want me to talk about what, other, what the hell else y'all got going on in that goddamn 404 <laughs> that got women running up out of there. You in here talking about yeah, rip the them, fold. We got them. We got them ladies though. They fine though. They fine. Yeah. They ain't nothing like them Texas women. Them Louisiana women. Louisiana women. A lot, lot Louisiana. Everybody. Saint hey, James Atlanta. Women. Atlanta. Atlanta is the foundation for what all them cities want to be. Now, Boy, you look, stupid. But no, 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 no. Sound, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Crazy. Let me finish my point. Talking look, crazy. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna say too much. Cause look, I'm just. I moved to Atlanta. I ain't even really from there. I'm so, really from Texas. You re- so listen. Man, I'm running back to the city. Ain't I'm, even a, from, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a running to y'all though. You from but, what? You from Miami, right, Ro? Chris Zach. But the crib, Atlanta, right? That's the crib, Atlanta right? is the heart I, of his look, real five. I, I rep the three is the heart of his real five. I don't rep nowhere else. Now. 305. I don't rep nowhere else. Nowhere else. else. 305. That 337. You know, you know. 305. You know how I run around every day, man. I got a 214 phone number. We breed them athletes. You name them. Who, you, who you talking about? Four. Texas or Atlanta? We don't know what now you. Now we talking about Georgia. We could talk about Georgia. because You see what I'm Texas saying? You ain't even from Georgia. But you seen the chat, though. They said I was hot. Texas Ooh. women been that. Texas, hey, somebody I'm said, not, y'all didn't even so let wait, me finish my statement. What they say, somebody I'm said, Cobb County is not Atlanta. Oh, yeah, not Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> he hollered out Cobb oh. County. Y'all <laughs> too bad. Not Atlanta. Not Atlanta. He hollered out Cobb hey, County. But the Braves play Cobb, in Cobb, Cobb, Cobb County. No, but shout out That's to my cool. people Cobb in Atlanta, my family. If y'all watch, I love y'all. I thought you guys were different from Texas. Hey, yeah, you I see how born, that man eat. Hey, I ain't said, I <laughs> Where you were raised at? I was places, born, bro. raised in Atlanta. I grew up in Atlanta from 6th grade all the way to 12th grade. I graduated high school from Hillgrove High School. Go check up on us. We ain't even I'm not about to check years. that. Yeah. We, we you, got them you, dogs. Yeah, you we breed them dogs. Man, dog. San Antonio. You didn't stand here for 30 minutes. I heard you say shit, but shit from Texas. You ain't named nothing in Texas. Mm-hmm. You ain't named your school in the elementary See, school in Texas. You ain't named your mama school. You hey. ain't named where you grew up at. Hold on, put the camera. Hey, they don't know. Take that camera Little off, do man. They that boy know. don't know where he from. Little do they know. I went to David Robinson School in San Antonio, Texas from pre-K all the way to third grade. That I'm don't stepped in, I'm stepped in San Antonio. My You're not even from real Texas. You can San Antonio. I'm from Texas. Okay, she from Dallas. Let me go ahead. Detown. That's the real Texas. Detown. Shout out to Dallas. My daddy could basketball at Rice. Went to UT. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Your dad did what? Let me go ahead and shout him out. Oh, we got a dad thing coming up now. That's my dad watching. My daddy could basketball at Rice. Got his shout master's out. at UT. My granddaddy went to uh, Lamar and Beaumont. Shout there out to go. Texas. Shout out to Texas. See how she oh. rep Texas? Hey, my and sister she... got two natties at Baylor. What happened, though. We really from Texas, huh? though. What? My sister got two natties at, at Baylor right now, so we ain't even talking about nothing. Your real sister? My blood sister. That don't count. <laughs> that don't count. Okay. Now, now he want to write a poke. Number 24. <laughs> now my sister in Texas. Name. You yeah. should have led with that. Yeah, you you should have started with that. that. If you from Texas, that's yeah. what to be putting on. You see that. what Jay hit led with? My daddy Rice, dude. Mm. And you, don't play with him. And don't, don't play, play with, with him. Pops. Don't play with him. Hey, oh, that's a great segue, Jay. Uh-oh. Tell us. We, we, we was having a conversation. Right, we was having a conversation about dads. <laughs> Stu has issue with his dad. Hey, Stu, y'all Stu. know I got y'all hey. know. <laughs> y'all want me? You got all kind of issues. I can tell. <laughs> Stu had an issue with his dad, and I ain't gonna lie to that. If you if you were to flip that issue right, you'd, you'd, you already yeah, know what you already you already like, know. Man, dog. why you ain't? Man, oh, so oh, you, you can't call oh, me yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, you don't call no more, huh? Right. So, Stu, tell us, Stu, what happened all with right, your so, daddy? Yesterday, my dad called. He texted me earlier in the morning. You need that he, hit? He he work on the he work on the plane. Oh, I was holding it. <laughs> Go ahead. He work at the plane. He work for a Greco. Shout out to my dad. He do, do some hard work. Hard working guy. You know what I'm saying? But he he texted me earlier in the morning. He said, "Call me whenever you leave work." <laughs> so I call him when I leave work. I left at like five, six, something like that. Call him. He was like, "Uh, I'm about to I'm about to take a shower and eat dinner, and I'm gonna call you back." I'm like cool, so this that by this time I'm like yeah, I I, I kind of know he ain't gonna call me back because I know what type of dude he is. He gonna get that, get that, that take that shower, get that food. It's over with. Itis. <sighs> get a couple brews, you know how that go, and then be sleep. But I know if it was me and I told him I was gonna call him back, 
Oh man, you ain't call me back. You ain't do this. You ain't. Do, you know. How, you know how it go, bro. Absolutely. So, have you spoken to him? I have not spoken to him today. <laughs> so, yet. I have not spoken to hey, him. Hey, we gonna leave that right there. We gonna highlight that next, Jay. Dad, if you Tell, uh, hey. I hope Pop's listening, dog, because you started the conversation. My daddy be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Man, my daddy be tripping," but he be, but he, but he, but but what you said, my daddy be tripping. But I mean, he a good dad. I love my dad. My yeah. dad. He Tell us why he was tripping. Three girls by himself. Shout out to Pops. Shout out for real. But, Goodness um, gracious. Shit. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Pops. But um. It wasn't really his fault, but my sister, my ace, like that's my dog. So I'm always watching my sister. How old is your sister? 16, finna be 17. Okay, got you, got you. So mm, Jada, yeah. <laughs> Jada had got pulled over because she was speeding or whatever. And she went home and told my dad about it or whatever. And she, granted, she did lie. She did say something that didn't happen, like where she was at, like where she was pulled over at. <laughs> but I mean, he had ain't no, but I mean, no. but he took see, home. I'm, like, I'm in dad's like, position oh. right now. Right. I'm in dad's you position lie. right now. <laughs> okay, but You like, can't lie because you know why? There's about to be some money involved. There's about to be some I mean, insurance questions involved. I need to know, did the police come? No, like she didn't hit nobody. She oh, was just speeding. Like I jumped it. She was speeding. She got but, a ticket? Yeah, she got a ticket for speeding. Oh, yeah. And he was asking her why she got it in this location. Uh-huh. And that's, and she, I guess she lied about where she was coming from. And she was like, I ain't have so to So what was she really doing? Um, <laughs> will you get her in trouble? Would oh, you say? Yeah, that's it. That's I never switch on my swim. So. I know, but that's why I asked you. <laughs> you like, plead, with, I plead I the fifth. Is this still a sensitive subject? I'm your, subject? I'm your lawyer right now. I don't know the ins and the plead outs. Plead the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth. I don't know the ins and the outs. I'm your lawyer. But you know why she don't want to lie again? Yeah, I'm, look, I'm her. Lo- look, I'm her lawyer in this situation. Hey, I'm a look. She don't want to lie. Your Honor, can I have a moment hey, with my client? We should have had you holla at twin off air. She should have called in. Yeah. She your Honor. So what she lied about? Your what Honor. She said, what she told your dad? Your Honor, can I have a moment with my client? No, you may not. I don't. I don't. What know did the she ins, tell your dad? I don't know the ins and the outs of where, but hey, okay, basically we live off of uh, the Dallas North Tollway, and I guess she got pulled over on like George Bush. George Bush is going east and westbound. We live north and southbound. Mm. So he like, where was you coming from? Like where was you going? Mm. So. That's what happened, but... So, let me ask you a question, dog. Let me ask you a question. He took her phone. I was like, man, I got to talk to my dog. That's my ace. Like, me and Jada from the womb. How long he took her phone for? A few days, I think. That's it? No, we used to have our phone took for a long time. I went, like, two months without a phone. So, let me ask you this. Do you know where she was coming from? I don't know. You don't know, okay. I'll never So, let me ask you this again. Let me ask you another question. Because it's your sister, you know your sister, y'all tight. You know if you was in court there. If she lied, because she lied, she lied, clear, everybody knows she lied. Being that she lied, do you have an idea where she was coming from? No clue. I don't have an idea. So why would she got to lie then? She was telling me that she was like, that's, she just started driving, so it's the first time getting pulled over. Oh. So I think she was still in panic mode. Spook. She was like, I'm just finna lie. She was... <laughs> <laughs> she was spooked. I think she but she told me she was like I had no reason to lie though I was just like still in that mode and I just lied and she was like the thing is if I didn't lie I wouldn't have been in trouble everybody she lied all the time no everybody lied a little bit right? <laughs> <laughs> that means she lied I mean, all the time everybody yeah. lied to their parents yeah, like the stuff that, but bit. the thing is that's why that's my dog because he'll tell us like I was there before too. Like that happened to me before too. Yeah. So I'm not really mad at you because I've been there before. But I mean, yeah, you like, still got to face consequences. Right. Right. I like how you. I like how you pivoted that to that being your dog. You know that where is, we no. at? We with our we dogs right now. Dog we in the kennel. We, we in the kennel. Who your sister? Fraternity. He Omega. a real dog. Who? My daddy and my granddad, oh, and my it. uncles. All of them. Oh. Listen, we got to bring your daddy in here, dog. We got somebody in chat say everybody's dog. That man raised three of y'all. Everybody does lie a little. Like, a, just a, Everybody lie a little. You got to cut that shit out, though. No, not like not I like don't. that, but you know, people... people some white people, lies? Some people, yeah, they put a little white lie in there. So you're going to sit there and say you never lied to your parents? Oh, yeah. 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 I might still lie. Shit. <laughs> I mean... Man, I ain't lying to my mom about nothing at this age. Like, 
this so you, what well, you you're a boy. What I'm a girl. My dad. Right? Yeah. Well, no, no, like to my parents. At Come this point, with me. Like, I'm about to say whatever. I'm, I'm a really grown ass man. I'm about to say what's I going my on. Own bills. Shit, I well, now I don't, I don't really lie, do. but when I was 16, 17. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, lying. 16, yeah. 17. Yeah, you. Every, you right. You gotta, but like at the end of the day, it's not everybody did. It's not that you lying because you don't want to tell your parents the truth. So why you just tell them the truth? It's that you lie. It's it's that sometimes us at our at that age. We lying because we trying to protect our parents because they know if I told my mom at 16, 17. Because we were fucked up. Like, look, if there were some things at 16, 17 that I'm doing at 22, 21, 22 that my mom sees more. So you don't want your mama to know you're a piece of shit. (laughs) <laughs> well, no. Let me tell you why I used to lie. I used to lie because yeah, I'm telling the truth. And you, 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 you want to keep that that innocence. That innocence. <laughs> yeah. trying to, like, trying to my mama see me as a little bit. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But you know, I just say that. Boy. Yeah. 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 I, I, and I, I don't mean you're a piece of shit. Yeah. I'm talking about myself too at that age. <laughs> but yeah, like but I know what you I, mean. Like even now when I talk to my mom about girls and stuff, she'd be like, I never want my daughter to date you. I'm like, she you just she don't hate the player, hate the game, you know? <laughs> you can't be mad at me, but when I was 16, 17, she, she could get mad at me if I snuck a girl in the crib. Now, I'm, I got a married night, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you why I used to lie that. Hey, dog, you, you need to save some stuff. Don't be busting yourself oh, on here, yeah, boy. Yeah, hey, hey, look. Yeah, hey, what's wrong with bro, you? You know what that is, the women watching. That's what that is. That's yeah, what it is. Got, got him on That's why he got, talking yeah, like that, huh? Right, right he now. He on here loose. Hopefully, they hey, not. He trying to, he trying yeah, to make sure. Yeah, I'm about look, to say. Listen. He trying to make sure they seeing this. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They got to feel listen. him. Not just see. Look, not just see me. That's you got to feel Did you hear what that boy just said? Look, I heard what he said. Hey, check the group chat, though. <laughs> I t- look. I swallow my phone before I let anybody. Jack the group chat. Wait, did you just <laughs> say? You hey, I swallow your phone. phone before I so yeah. Go. So you would swallow the your phone. phone. I'm throwing hold it on, in the on, lake. On, on, so, you heard him? So we got a thing with. Now you gonna smash that bitch on her? Bro, 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 we got a thing with Jamil that we ask her. What, what's the pettiest thing that you would cut a man off for? <laughs> And her thing is, if she was on a date with a man uh-huh. and he blew his food, if, he had, if it was too hot. That's what I'm saying. That's like, it. That's you, it. Hey, <laughs> she wants you to burn your fucking mouth. Off. I don't get why that's the way Look, it's going to work. Good. That's, that's, she want, she your wants you to burn your fucking mouth. Up. Up. Hey, <laughs> she wants you to throw that fucking gumbo straight. Yo, I ain't never heard that shit before. Are you crazy? Yeah. You know how that gumbo is? No, gumbo's different, but if you did like a restaurant, you got like. What you mean, blow your food? Say you like a steak restaurant or something. You blow your steak or your mashed potatoes. I'm going to be like. Are you blowing your mashed potatoes? Oh, no, I agree with you. Why are you blowing your steak? Shit ain't that hot. But no, Ryan you asked me about, yesterday. Uh, he was like, that. "Would <laughs> you rather man blow his food or smack blow that food?" I'm sorry, I can't smack. What's man. that? Like that? Hell smack no! Oh, I'm gonna nah. smack it on the table. table. Hell nah, smack. <laughs> you know who smack, smack that's table. That's a female trait. <laughs> I don't even smack. That's like you should smack. Men don't smack. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> men don't. Men do. I know a man that's. No, nah, I'm just saying <laughs> men do do that. But I'm saying that is not a man's trait. Like, you, I mean, that food be good to you sometimes. You get to smack you. Know exactly. I mean? This should be good. Put a little taste no, be on I'm your mouth. Be tasting I, good. I, you know what I'm saying? I but good, like, yeah, mm, mm, good. Good. But men don't like you. Men don't do that regular. Women smack. Do that regular. Like, no, dude. Yeah, I I don't want no man smacking. I. Re- that you crazy. But blowing your food, I don't know. What, what does is. that mean to you when they blow their food? But somebody had asked it on Twitter, and I had thought about it. I was like, I wouldn't like that. But the, the, the pettiest thing that I stopped on somebody for was, like, not closing my door. Like, not closing your my car door. Your car door? I was like. That ain't petty? He had walked off, and he, like, didn't close the door. Nah, that like, ain't petty, though. I don't like that. That's being a gentleman. Cause my dad's a gentleman. Same thing I said. You was raised right. That's being a gentleman. I said that was just a normal gentleman gesture. Yeah, he dropped that. Yeah, he dropped. Yeah, he dropped that ball. That ain't that ain't on you right there. That you was raised right. Shout out, shout out to dad again. That's the same thing I told. I said that you was raised right. Gave you a standard, and that's what you and he did. Shout out to dad again. The standard is very high. I mean, why you want to be with a dude that? Just walk away from your door. He was Why like, are you right, sitting there waiting for He said, all right, I'm going to see you later. I said, 
<laughs> Not all right. I'm gonna see you later. Just open. Somebody just go rob that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 was, hey. I ain't coming up here no more. Oh lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't think that's you. I think that's whoever that young man was. God bless him, and hopefully he's changed his ways <laughs> of how he go away, go about courting young ladies. Um, but I don't think you was wrong in that one, Jay. You you did the right thing, dog. You did the right thing with that one. Stu don't Stu don't uh, open doors and, and, and pump gas yes, and he all do. that. Who? Yes, he does. Look at Stu. Man, look. Look, at Stu. look. look, you see how quick she jumped to your defense, dog? Check, hey, the, group, check the group chat. Check That's the my group chat. My look. slime. Look. Look. My Man, slime. Look. Hey, check the group chat, dog. You ain't seen our handshake. <laughs> we tweeted. You ain't seen our handshake. Let me see it. We got to yeah. Y'all got to y'all got to see the hand. <laughs> set the camera. Boy, you switch to you. Can we get it in the camera? Hold on, where the y'all camera? on some stupid shit right now. Let me see this. <laughs> and they hit it on the first time. <laughs> they they got that bitch in sync. Hey, it's my slime. Oh, she feeling that one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that was impressive. <laughs> that, was that was impressive. impressive. That was impressive, OP. What you think? <laughs> that was uh, that was fucking impressive. That was Can we see it again? Oh, one more time. Can y'all do it two times in a row? Oh yeah, that's us. She popped her ass up too. Are you? Let me see this. Look, y'all ain't even bump fingers with this one or nothing. Y'all went straight. Oh, you in. just oh. All right. Now y'all just showing off. How long did y'all take <laughs> take to learn that? Uh, it was really like a day. We like we sat in here and we just kind of went through it. We kept going it through wasn't it. Long we messed up a, a couple day. times. We messed up a couple times. But we but got then this we, part. Once we, we got, got the once we got the the. If y'all knew what we got. This <laughs> yeah, part. you would. You would. <laughs> Shout out to Drewski. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Drewski for Where did that come from? So it was. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was on a, like a a video we saw online on Instagram. It was this he dude talked. named Drewski, a comedian, fat dude. Yeah, yeah. He he got a video and he was like, "This dudes be like this when they get in front of girls. They always want to do their handshake. <laughs> and, and during the handshake, they did the little." Right there, and shaky, that, shaky. Yeah, and it was just funny, and we thought it was so funny, so it was like, we got to add that Y'all to the shit. Y'all too stupid as hell. <laughs> Y'all too stupid. <laughs> Creative hey, minds. That is great. I love that handshake, though. That was dope. It looks very complex. Dog, I'm going to tell you, don't you think LeBron got to have a hell of time remembering all the handshakes he, he got, had? Bro, that... This man got a handshake I, with every teammate. Everybody! <laughs> That's the other side of the brain. He working that other side of the brain. Hey, For that real. motherfucker, dog. <laughs> I mean, every when he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers, he come off and every single person. Everybody. I was like, God damn, the boy got a handshake for everybody. everybody. And I, I couldn't even remember. I wouldn't even remember the first one, though. Like, that boy remember all 12. All 12 players. Damn. So y'all got your own. OP don't got no handshake. I mean, I got one with Lloyd, but like it's like I be chilling. It ain't like that. Like it's just like. Is it that intricate? I mean, nah. Lloyd don't get too. We gotta add some more. We just where do we get this part? It's like you know, like oh, I don't don't even. For me, because I was like, Uh, nothing too too crazy. Like I gotta let him keep keep up. Like I can't do nothing too crazy. Yeah, I see. I feel you. Yeah, but Lloyd would you. get complex if you if you want to. Lloyd to go <laughs> out with you. Lloyd to go to a <laughs> lot of. Lloyd can go to a lot we of places. Have to practice that shit, though. Yeah, you're you have right. To really lock in see, see, me and Jamil just had we yeah, had a lot like, of time. I watch y'all sit, Sometimes we were sitting in here and we just. I watch y'all grind. We in sync. Are we here? Exactly. Y'all it's definitely is in like sync. A, like a shortstop and a second baseman. Just a. That wasn't. It's just an easy flip. I be doing not even looking. Four, two, three, double play. Just, I can do it. We just, we just double play every time. Just. Or is it 6 4 3? He's Scotty. He's oh, we got four three. Six, what? Scotty and Mike. Yeah. I'm Mike. No, I, I'm, I'm definitely. We just Mike. had this. I'm de- I'm, who did he use? Yeah, you, you I'm Scott. Mike. I'm Mike. You got to be Scotty. I'm still a role player. Yeah, yeah you Scotty. No, nah, you, you a hooper. 
Scotty was a Hooper. You're fifty greatest player. Why yeah. can I not be? I got that mind. No, you're not Jordan. I'm, I'm MJ. Mike. I'm for sure. You're MJ. not Jordan. I'm for sure MJ. Okay. I got that. If you know this guy. I got that dog 50. in me. I got you that dog. In. I will guy. never sit out a game. That boy say he got the dog. Oh, oh, when they call your team out in practice, I'm Jordan. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm definitely Jordan. I'm I'm one hundred percent Jordan. I'm definitely Jordan. I'm I'm Jordan without fucking with my teammates we'll outside. and not we'll really not Jordan. giving them food after the game and shit. But I'm. Why would you do that? Oh, you ain't you, doing that. You know how MJ was. That just how we how, yeah, how he I got agree. down. I you know what I'm saying. I'm hey, just, so we got what? How many days of football season? Fifty three days? Fifty two days? Fifty one? Like, what the hell is it? Hold on, like hold on. That. I seen a tweet earlier. Odell Beckham. Hey, OBJ? is he in Green Bay? I don't know where he. Is. I, I saw. I saw. See, look, my prediction is. Hey, you get that boy with Aaron Rodgers, baby. Look, my it's prediction is. A Rod. He is going to be in. New Orleans? Cincinnati. Mid season. See what I. I don't know that. See, dog. my prediction oh, is. Mid season? So right now he rehabbing. He's getting right. He a free agent right now. He was just on a, a what, a one year deal with. with uh, 52 days. I saw a thing that. 52 days till we kick it off. I saw. It. <laughs> Go ahead and do your hey, voice. Hey, now, nah, OP, now, you know. Once this football season start, dog, we're gonna be out there with the fans, baby. I know. They got they gotta see the OP, baby. I know, baby. They gotta see the OP Man, out we there. Gotta get some, we hey. gotta get some shirts and everything. We're getting all that. We need everything. We're getting all that, y'all. Yeah. Hey, put put the put put that thing on OP, dog. <laughs> y'all see the boy OP right there. Man. Look, me and OP game days. We out there. Y'all get ready to I see the boy. We out- outside. What? No, I didn't know. I just got my student tickets today. I'm outside. Nah, you going to be inside. What are you talking about? You need to get him no, away saying, to somebody. You gonna no, what I'm saying. saying. We're going to be at the game anyway. Yeah, we, we're, Walk look, me, I'm trying to this, is a, this is sideline passes. That's what I'm trying to tell her. Talking about all, I'll be on there with my We're talking about all access, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you're her. You talking, talking about that little student stuff. We did that already. We moving up. We had a higher I never did it. Yeah. We're at a higher place. For the Southern LSU oh, game. Southern LSU I'm game. Look, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm, I'm. I'm at my we on the sideline again. <laughs> we on the sideline again. Listen, Where both. my dogs at? But y'all can't do both. You know. But y'all can't do both. We gonna can't. do what we wanna do. All look, cause Why? we didn't. Oh, oh. You know what? You know what? All access. You know what? You know what? All access. They gonna snatch you. I might run out the tunnel. They gonna snatch. You're not running out the tunnel. You don't know. I might be in the front. We'll run out the tunnel before you. Yep. If you ain't with us, let her know. Let her know, bro. We'll run out the tunnel before you. Let her know, bro. If you're not with us, we'll run out before you. Take my signs. Take my signs. But me, listen, listen, y'all, listen now. We about to get the studio. Me and OP gonna be out there, baby. Mm. Me and my dog out there. Y'all see us? Make sure you run up on us. Run up. No weapons, of course. Yeah, Yeah. hey man. Run up on me, <laughs> run, up on, run up on me and OP. Yeah, we gonna be out there amongst the people. Tailgate. Oh, OP. Oh, me and OP gonna get a handshake, dog. Run up on we gonna get a handshake. That's my That's mama calling. Seat. Should I take the call from my mama? Plug it in. You wanna plug it in? Nah, my mama be talking crazy, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna plug it in? Yeah, yeah. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Hold on. You got Hold on. Hey, ma. Ma, yeah. you can hear me? She hung up, I think. Hold on. You got to call it back. I got to call it back? Uh-huh. Dog, my mom be talking crazy. Though. I don't know if I want to put my mom on here, dog. Ooh. Hold on. Let me find out what she's talking about for her. Hold on. Yeah. No, it'd be funny if I don't, huh? Uh, just, just, just put on. Yeah, that. put on. Just put on. How we do it? Put on, what, huh? What is the thing? The ma. Oh, I can't hear. Ma. <laughs> Real bad. Hey, hold on, all right? Hold on right quick. Hold on. She go crazy now. Cut me off. Cut me off. <laughs> Stu. She go crazy. Cut me off. No, the girl be tripping some time. Ma. Mm. What she doing? You sleep? Who this? What you mean, who this is? Your son. Uh. Richard man? Not Richard. Your <laughs> other son. Ain't that something? Uh-huh. You just called me, mama. You know you just called me. I know. So, what? So why are you asking me who am I? I must hold on. So I, <laughs> I know. I told you to hold on so I could, so I could pass the phone to Stewie. Stewie. 
Yeah. What you doing? Do I remember you? Nah, Stewie ain't play football. Stewie is my is the producer on the on the podcast. I got you on the podcast right now. Mm, that podcast. You don't like it? You be cussing too much. <laughs> You be cussing too much on that podcast. You said be cussing too much. Keisha said, Keisha said, and daddy, you can watch that because that's what they do. That's what they like. That's what they like to hear. I said, you be cussing, smoking, and drinking. I said, what is that? Yeah, like that's for people when they, they off of work, they just relaxing, you know, and they at home. You know, that cussing, why they got to come? No, nah, I cuss like in my conversation. Why you gotta cuss? Cuss, sometimes you need a little cuss word to get your point across. Well, you can you can do other things to get your point across. Like what? Anyway. You still in Baton Rouge? <laughs> hmm? You yeah. ain't getting there tomorrow, are you? No, I am. We we're gonna be there tomorrow after <laughs> we're gonna get in there tomorrow evening, man. <laughs> so, I, I I just talked to Mike. Mike said, Miss Daddy, I ain't getting in until late. You cook. You cooking tomorrow. I say I already done cook. Yeah, but that's all right. Just have that shit ready and then he you said, can just heat it up. But but he said maybe he make Kai take us to the hotel for him. I said, That's okay. Well that's if good. Make you, if you want me to make your plate for for he I can give it to Ty. I know my mama's saying, huh? I do. Uh, we, you know, we, we know, know that patois. Saying. We know that patois. Oh. Yeah. You 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 hear them people talking, ma? I hear. Hey. That, Hello. Why you ain't say hi, ma? Them people say hi to you. I didn't hear. Hello. Y'all Hello. say it again. Hello. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? What's, up? What's up? I'm good. You all doing the podcast now? Yeah, you own it. You ain't know you was on it. <laughs> you was on it. I put you on it. Boy, don't be giving us a <laughs> Oh I told I told him to cut you off and you start talking crazy, man. No, I ain't talking crazy. Nah, we get in tomorrow. We'll be in tomorrow even. You be in tomorrow late? Uh, not too late, but I mean enough time, man. Definitely enough time to get something to eat for sure. Of course, because you can't afford to have my daughter hungry. Nah, she ain't gonna be hungry. She good. We we ain't gonna keep her hungry. <laughs> you, you just All right, worry about my me, darling. Now. Uh, good night to everybody. Enjoy the um, podcast. I, I we'll try to clean up the language, okay? Good night. Good night. Good, good night. night. Good, good night. night. Have a good night. Have a good weekend, okay? Later, my lady. Ba- baby boy, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, my lady. You too. Bye bye. Get my mama off of that. I thought <laughs> she was about to <laughs> get all sentimental on the thing, going crazy. We about to get out of here now. Oh, mama, let's call you. Jaden made me put my mama on the thing. It's your fault. <laughs> it's damn sure your fault. I'm glad she ain't say nothing crazy though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, I'm glad you say nothing crazy. But yeah, I am going home. My aunt's turning 60. Um, well, one of my aunts turning 60, and my other aunt actually turning like 69. They born on the same day, but different years. So, and then my baby birthday is my fiance birthday is Sunday. So we're just gonna chill, celebrate a little bit. We had a new addition come in this thing today, huh, Stu? Mm-hmm. We had a new addition come over there. We're just gonna call him Playboy, Playboy, <laughs> Playboy. We say Playboy. Ooh, OP look OP like that. <laughs> we got the dog. new addition hey, play ball. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. You, you, you just can't get him no mic. Huh, Stu? That's my dog, though. That boy got that energy. I love him, bro. The energy coming here and get that thing going. Hey, let me tell you, I'm the luckiest man. I got a great crew. I love. You hear a lot of people, bro, talk about, like, they know the, the youth. And the younger generation, they don't want work. They don't want this. I hear like my generation say it all the time, and everybody else, you know, many me talk down about the youth and this and that. I can't see it. I can't see it. Not if I'm going off of what's in front of me. These young entrepreneurs and these young go getters, and you know, everybody in here, man. This whole crew that I got in front of me is that new generation, that new young hip crew with all the ideas that we need to 
Take the ideas. What you putting your lip up for? <laughs> you cry, crying emoji. <laughs> stupid. <You're> so stupid. <laughs> That's why I put it on. Oh, no. That's exactly why I put it on. <laughs> but that, but that Can't even take them serious. You can <laughs> never, bro. Trying to have a serious never, moment. <laughs> like her. never. She's like, oh god, cry me a river. <laughs> 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 that's, a sh- that's a shout out to y'all though. I know, that's what I'm <laughs> y'all raw, y'all raw. I appreciate y'all, man. We're gonna be back at it like Craftmatic. We got a new addition, boy. Playboy, Playboy, gonna be back with us again. He took he in there. He over there in Kev spot. He over there in Kev spot. Just keep yeah. that thing hot. It's your you. spot, huh? Kev, come back. Now. You gotta get him. Kev, oh, come back. Oh, come back. Gotta right, throw you look. away, Playboy. Uh, Look, we're gonna make See, they, gonna make everybody love Kevin here, bro. Yeah, man, look, that's the OG, bro. <laughs> that is the OG, that is the OG, that is the OG for OG. real. OG. Like, when, look, when you found that 337, what, all you hear is Kate Feezy. Because yeah. Kate Feezy was the first one rocking, from that area to really put it down. Get out there and put it out there. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, we had Dalton. Nah, you're right, bro. I, go, but, I forgot I got to go out tonight. One. My party she started an hour and a half. You got a party tonight? Yeah, I got a party tonight. We let, had let, let the boy know. We had deuces tonight, 9.30. Doors open Tiki Thursday each and every Thursday. Hosted by the one and only Mr. LSU, TJ Polk. We got DJ Moswag on the one and the twos. DJ Neff. Mr. Dial Neff, 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 Neff. In there, turning up all night drink specials. Let's go. We doing it. We getting ready they for the fall because we finna Tell go Tell them where is that again? Deuces. Where De- is that? Deuces Bar and Grill on North Acadian Thruway. There you go. We there. Let's get go it. Go see my dog in that, man. Mention, mention where my dog's at. You don't get no discount, though. Just mention it. Ladies, we already know. Look at him. He you having a good, right not, right a good right time right. tonight? Say what? If you, have, if you got some good, say hell yeah. <laughs> Bro. See, that's what my mama talking about right yeah, there, dog. See, this, see yeah. we Whoa. not see Kev would have never said that. Whoa. See, that's the problem. We're gonna end like that. That's the problem. All right. All right. That's what my mama talking about, OP. What do you Whoa. mean? That's what my mama talking about. We that? can't have that, dog. What do you yeah. mean by that? That's what mom's talking about. That wasn't for you. I know what I'm saying. That's that for whoever's saying. coming. What do you mean by that? Whoa. You know what he mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What he mean? I Catch know, your I eye too. You got something in your eye. Catch your eye. What's up, man? What's in my eye? I don't know. Catch it and see. It. It's now it's in the middle of your forehead right here. Don't play wrong. I'm dead serious. <laughs> it's in the middle of your forehead. Oh, uh, I told you. That. Say ooh. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> that bitch sound like a DJ. <laughs> TJ hey, it look. Is. <laughs> MCs. We're gonna be back next week. We're gonna get the hell up out of here so Playboy can make his party. <laughs> hey, y'all go ahead. And, what's the name of the place? Deuces. Deuces. <laughs> Just put that in your GPS. I know the name. Y'all get over there and holler at me, dog, man. For myself, Stu, J, O, P, Z, and the new boy, Playboy. We out. Where my dogs at? See you next week. Oh! We got to make a different noise every time. I don't even know if the noise be coming.